Welcome back to a wonderful episode of Conversations for Days, Ooh. the number one podcast in Ottawa. You're here with Lilo, got the Rev, Frankie over here. Yes, sir. And uh, just before we get started, you know, just for our fans, uh, our fans for days out there, uh, I just want to give a royal shout out to all you guys who are staying engaged, you know, uh, keeping up with us, uh, hitting the subscribe button, liking, and giving us those five star ratings. We really appreciate that. To our first timers out there, don't forget to do those things, you know, like, subscribe, follow. And don't forget to hit that notific notifications tab so you can, you know, keep up with us. So coming at you with another cool episode right here. We got some amazing guests and, uh, you know, got some veterans over here. So I'm going to start off with Sigma Leo. Welcome back. You know, what's good? What's good? I have arrived. All right. The man is back. The man is back. So, I mean, you know, tell us about yourself. What's going on in your current life? Uh, what's good these days? Um, so Sigma D Leo, I'm uh, everything anime. You can find me on YouTube. I do One Piece reviews. I also own a small business where I sell clothes like this one right over here. And so you can check me out on Instagram, leovic underscore 13. 100%. Get that drip, guys. It's actually flawless. So uh, the next guest, we got like ICR right here. You know, my guy, welcome back. Welcome back. How you feeling this day? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me back, guys. We have yes, to do. No. And what's going on in your current life, man? Tell us, tell us, you know, what's good. Uh, you know, the boy's still on that grind. Uh, I got a new song coming out the 18th called We Don't Care, featuring an artist called Harry Blazing. Nice. Um, I'm going to have some videos coming out pretty soon also, you know, I'm just releasing music, working hard, you know, trying That's to get people good. engaged. Amazing. And we have two new guests right here. So we got Nayeli and Carla. I'm going to start off with uh, Nayeli. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, how you, been? how you been? Welcome, and uh, thank you for joining us on the podcast here. Thank you. Thank what's you. Thanks for having day? me. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Oh, like, like, what's good in your day-to-day? -day? Like, uh, what's, uh, what's up with little, the little uh, intro about yourself, <laughs> Nayeli? A little intro about myself. Yeah, All right. Exactly. Hi, everyone. I am Nayeli. Um, I know Frankie through high school. <laughs> A little <laughs> reunion, we were saying, so it's fun. Um, I work for the public service, so Government of Canada, and I manage social media accounts for a government department. And wow. fun fact, I just recently bought a condo and I just moved in right. uh, last week. Wow. So, okay. yeah, settling in. That's not bad. Good time. <laughs> 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 That's right. That's right. And Carla, Carla, what's good? What's good? Thank you so much for joining us, too. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. So, I am an actor and a early childhood educator. So, the mix kind of is off, but you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Bring the world into one. I like that. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I sometimes they work applied, you know what I mean? But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, so, you know, you guys have, we have a great panel today, and um, I can't wait. It's going to be a great episode. So I'm going to tip it off to the red. You know, let us know what's good. Alrighty. So we're going to have a spicy episode. So you know, it's, the, it's episode 10 of chapter five. So we wanted to bring a good panel and talked about dating or even better dating scene in Ottawa okay so first even before I ask the intro question I want to know about everybody your status right so if I ask everyone by one by one are you uh, in a relationship single or in between so we'll start with uh, Sigma Leo what is your current status my current status um you really have to start with me every time eh? yeah. um, <laughs> I, I say I say I'm single yeah I, I'm single Okay, okay, okay. Good answer. Uh, what about you, ICR? I'm in a relationship. One year, man. One year. Oh, yeah. Good Good Happy anniversary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good Thank you. We'll go with Nayeli. What about you? In a relationship, three years uh, this past week. So long term. <laughs> Happy anniversary to you, too. That's great. Thanks. <laughs> and then uh, what long about long you, that good experience. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm still. Yeah. Single? Okay, okay. And Kalilo? I already know for the fans. Single two. Single two. Yeah. Single two. Yeah, what about rest? Uh, ready to mingle. <laughs> single and ready to mingle. <laughs> that's a commercial right there. <laughs> okay, so that's perfect. I, I like the fact that we actually have a couple people that are in a relationship so they can bring a very interesting perspective on this. So we'll start with this first question, right? So for Nayeli, I see art. Think of your life before being in a relationship. So the whole dating scene. So how how would you like okay tell me about your experience and the dating scene here in ottawa so we can go with again sigma leo i'll put the pressure on you 
tell me about your experience since you've been a young adult here in the streets. How, how, how has it been for you, the dating scene? Uh, I'm going to have to think about it a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. um, does anyone want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> Sigma tossing that spotlight. Um, how about you, Carla? Um, I don't know. I don't usually date. Okay. But when it comes to the auto scene, I think I find it hard in a way. Just mm -hmm. because like, like you already know these people, you know, like you know their history, you know what they're about. Sometimes it's nice to like just meet someone and you know nothing about them, like nothing. Mm -hmm. you, know, like, you know, like you get to know that person, you know, like you don't know like their friends or which high school they went to or anything, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, it's like a fresh slate. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. And it's like honestly, when it comes to online dating as well, you know, you can't actually like. Um, I know that I'm, I'm pretty sure that Tinder, like it's only, it runs all like Ottawa, you know, like locally stuff. Like you can't actually like go on Tinder like around the world and get to know people. So it makes it even harder. You know what I mean? That's true. That would actually be really interesting. Like, uh, you know, you plan to go to Toronto next week or something like that. So it's like, you can, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. That'd actually be pretty, pretty dope. They should, they should hop on something like that if they don't have yeah. it already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And well, if I ask you this then, Carla, so I, I love your answer when you talked about the whole aspect, okay, meeting someone new because, you know, in Ottawa, it's like, even though it seemed like it's a big city, it's very a small city. So most people know pretty much everybody, you know, friends of the friends, but then like, so you say you don't really date much. So then how do you, like, how do you meet guys then if I ask you this? I think now, mostly for everyone also, I think social media. Okay. Social media is like, it takes a big key in everyone's life to meeting someone and to get even like knowing to get to know them even without even having them know that you're getting to know them you know because like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so, like I'm, I'm gonna know who your cousin is who your grandma you know what i mean like with, with just that. tags you know? yeah <laughs> no i gotta hop on what you just said carla so now see i'm inspired <laughs> whenever you meet somebody in ottawa i realized that right away they want to know about like your instagram and your social kind of like they want to profile you a little bit before they actually meet you and i'm a little bit like the opposite i don't know if you guys watched this episode of how i met your mother but ted he didn't want to spy on the girl he he was with because he didn't want to have any like preconceived idea of who she was i'm a little bit like that i feel like social media is taking over and i like to meet somebody based on who they are and not be influenced whatsoever by their profile that's true. That's a big thing. Yeah, everybody does that that stalking, you know? <laughs> like, it's kind of mm -hmm. almost natural to a degree that, like, somebody would want to, you know, just stalk, stalk somebody or, like, not not stalk somebody, but, like, do their research <laughs> on who they're dating. <laughs> exactly. I'm it over here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but, yeah. What Sigmila just said there is actually deep because that's my kind of new approach in terms of dating is that if I meet a girl, if it's online or face-to-face, -face, when it comes to social media, I try to keep it as private as I can for at least the first three months because I know that with social media, right away, a girl can have a judgment, a prejudgment about you. And if you see, oh, you have this amount of followers, oh, that's your lifestyle, oh, what, that's what you do, then they could kind of just be like turned off right away. But if you hide that, you kind of keep it as a mystery, then it maybe brings up more of the intri intrigue about you. Maybe like, oh, okay, yeah. this guy's kind of private. Let me get to know him more. So right. it's like my little tactic I try to do. And that'd be so much funner on a date, you know, rather than, because like, it, it turns a date into an interrogation if you kind of did your research on the person and you start asking questions, you know what I mean? Instead of like- I come prepared, bro. Here we go. Yeah. I, I mean, come prepared with the question, you know? You got at least some room for mystery, I find, you know? May I ask the girls if like, the amount of followers a guy have, is it a turn on or a turn off or do you not care? That's a good question. For me, I personally don't care. <laughs> yeah, I I think like I don't know why, but if you have like a lot of attention, I, I never liked a man who gets a lot of attention. I don't know why. It's like I don't know. Like I like a man who's low key. When it comes to social media, I want to be very low key. I don't know why. It's just me. <laughs> I agree. I think there's something to be said about like having like a decent presence. But like not so much so that you have like you know all of these followers and people are commenting on your stuff all the time i think like mm. it's always very hard when you're trying to get to know a guy to like know what he looks like before you actually see him and not that like looks matter all that much but to a certain extent you still want to know what to expect and men are just 
awful at taking photos most of the time. <laughs> wow. So if you have like a new, if you have like a nice profile with like nice photos, like, all right. And like, you could tell that like someone took the photos and like, you kind of, you know, you look good in them and you dressed up and you kind of made an effort. Like, yeah, that'll impress me, but I don't need you to have like thousands of followers. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. All right. Okay. Calling us out for bad photo taking, guys. You gotta step our <laughs> game up. You gotta Sorry. step our game. Like, like, like girls do this. You know, I felt a bit attacked, but it's 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 all good. It's all good. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'm gonna... There's exceptions. There's always exceptions. Yeah. I think men are getting better at that. <laughs> We're definitely <laughs> catching up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I see, Art, if I ask you about, uh, well, the initial question about, like, pre yeah. when you weren't in a relationship, how did the dating scene treat you in the city of Ottawa? Ooh. Um, I'm a social type of guy, so mm -hmm. uh, pre-relationship, I was mostly out uh, talking with people. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think the dating scene was as generous to me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it was still, I don't know, it, 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 I found a happy middle of, like, meeting people that there is no mutual friends between us, which is really cool. And then the majority of the people that I would meet would be like, well, through a friend of a friend, you know what I'm saying? Or like, I, they know somebody that I know and things like that, yeah. you know? The Ottawa scene, yeah, because, you know, cause Ottawa has, is a big city with a small town vibe. So, you're, you know, we bound to have mutuals most of the time, you know what I'm saying? Nine times out of 10, right? Um, yeah. But so I'm talking about back in pre-day, I wasn't really, you know, well, I wasn't really getting it like that. But, you know, I... I went in, you know, I did what I had to do. Yeah. So I did it only takes one. Yeah, you have a girl. Takes, so. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Hey, man. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then if I ask uh, Nayeli about your pre dating before being in your relationship with your men now, how was it for you? Um, I can't honestly think about a time where I was like actively dating. Like, I wouldn't consider myself, like, a serial, like, dater in the sense that, like, I've always been in relationships, but, like, that's kind of how it's been. Like, there hasn't been very big gaps where I wasn't. Okay. Um, I'd say, actually, when probably the only time that I was dating, I actually wasn't in Ottawa. I was in France. So that was, like, a whole other story. Yes, nice. <laughs> but like from that. this... <laughs> Like, yeah how's dating in france versus dating in canada like <laughs> oh man it's a ride yeah right. yeah frenchmen have no chill um <laughs> honestly like yeah. no shame they really think they're top dog they think that they can pull any woman and like it would be you know a blessing for you to be in their oh, presence wow. it's very interesting <laughs> the confidence is on just like another level but um yeah it was it was interesting <laughs> to say the least. Well, actually, Miley, I, like, because you said that, so when you were in France, right? And you lived yeah. in France, did you, I'm not saying, did you appreciate the fact that some of the guys were very confident and very assured in themselves when they tried to approach you? Or how did you react to that? I think there's a way to approach women confidently that doesn't come off as like, kind of like a red flag. Mm -hmm. And I think that, a lot of the times when men like in France were approaching me, like it made me very uncomfortable. And I don't know if that was just like a cultural thing, like kind of a, you know, culture shock in the sense that that's not really the regular approach in, you know, Canada. Like men aren't, don't tend to be very pushy. Sometimes they can be, absolutely. But in France, that seems to be the culture. And the women there just seem to kind of deal with it. And they just accepted it as being the way that it was. But yeah, me and my friend, whenever we'd go out, we would get like a lot of people approach us. And then obviously they'd hear the accent and they're like, oh my, you're not from here. You're Canadian. Da, da, da. And then they'd like want to push even more. And we were very quick to like kind of push back. And that kind of angered them sometimes. So yeah, yeah I, I'd say there's a way to be confident that you know you're kind of like on the same playing field and it's kind of nice because you can do like that little like power you know demonstration of like confidence and then there's another time that is just like way like over the top yeah yeah it's like just stop like <laughs> too much yeah That's interesting. Okay. anybody else have any other like dating experiences outside of Canada <laughs> <laughs> that's like like now you just open up that door i'm just like wait, let, me see, let me see who else has uh, got an experience here. Uh, honestly my experience has just been really i mean i'm like an ottawa ottawa guy so it's pretty much just been here so i can't say i've really had like outside experience like like nayeli like in france well i've never been in um other countries other than north america 
I mean, cutting it, but I did date a couple of foreigners. And I feel like for most, mainly in Europe, they're a lot more straightforward, as Nelly was saying. I yeah. feel like Canadian women are a lot more reserved. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say uh, maybe timid or shy. And the other girls are more, maybe it's because they're traveling. So the whole energy changed. Um, but I feel like they're a lot more um, straightforward. Yeah, I feel like because uh, I went to France myself and I was staying in hostels and I met uh, girls from Germany. It's like a more of a social vibe when you yeah. really speak to them. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I don't know, maybe here Canada is different because you really got like go and start the conversation or really, like sometimes carry the conversation sometimes. So that's what the vibe, which is the culture shock is like, a little different when you're here versus when you're, you know, somewhere else in the world. Yeah, and that's gold too, you know. I mean, you go to a different part of the world, for sure, you got you to experience it, you know, to the fullest. So it's just nice to meet new people, you know, talk about different things, have them take you places or, you know, yep. just have those fun experiences. So I like that. I like that. It kind of makes me want to travel now. So <laughs> you got to start planning some trips. <laughs> true, true. So I wanted yeah. to, to bring up some little stats, right? So it's like a little uh, study that I found is more, mostly about online dating, right? So they said here that according to those statistics, it showed that, um, so it was, I think, 20% of people that were like actively on the online dating sites actually end up being in committed relationship from those online dating. And 7% of them, they were actually, they got married out of meeting online, right? But when I saw those stats, I was like, huh, it's interesting because if you think about it, right? Like when you're on online dating, there's always the option of you can say, yeah, I want to, I'm looking for a relationship, right? And you would think, okay, if people really want to be in a relationship, their percentage should be higher. But then when you look at the percentage there, 20% out of 100 is pretty, is pretty low. So it's almost saying that 80% of the other people, it was kind of just like casual, never went anywhere. So I wanted to ask everybody. So then do you think that online dating is just a place for just casual, like just for casual like vibes? Or what would be your opinion about just the whole online dating? Like, what is the purpose of being in an online dating site? That's the I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you two different points. So first and foremost, I met my girlfriend on Bumble. So, oh, you know what I'm so off the off the rip, I was mostly there. Like, the online dating site kind of is kind of like a, a leeway to just be like, yeah, it's I would feel. I feel two ways. So casual dating is mostly the main one you're on, to be honest. Well, for me, it was. It's like, well, we can just chat it up. We can meet up quick things. We don't really got to do this whole, I'm going to take you out here, do that. It's most like, yo, we want to meet up. Kind of like, you, because you know the whole swipe right, swipe left. It's kind of like, oh, you're just screening people left and right. You're not really there like, oh, maybe I want to know this person. Or that mm-hmm. person's like, no, like, you, it's based most of attraction. She looks good most of the time. Okay, well, oh, we're a match. All right, let me... How much time will it take for me to, for you and me to meet? We can do it today. I right, let's move on. But then there's other people who are really like, all right, like me and my girl, like match. And we were talking for like months and months. And then we met up and then this whole thing happened. And then boom, there I am. So like it, it really depends. I know like initially it's mostly for like casual. Because when you meet people at a bar, at a restaurant, you gotta talk, socialize. You know what I'm saying? You might take a drink or whatever, but Online, it's like, okay, which, who's the prettiest or who's the more attractive that I want to, like, I even have a conversation. With right. Like, and, like, move to the next one. Uh, to piggyback on what you were saying, I think online dating is not the best place to build a relationship. I mean, it does happen, but 20% makes sense because most people would come in there saying, I want a relationship. And even the people who say I want casual would get into a relationship with the right person. But at the end of the day, it's a bit like Netflix. If you have too many options, and you're very quick to get turned off or to find something to disqualify somebody. Like, okay, this person, um, they don't iron their clothes. I'm done. You know, like the stupidest, re- silly reasons just to move on to the next best thing. And so you're going um, basically just a monkey branching. Like, okay, this guy, I'm not so sure about him. Let me, okay, he looks cuter. His nose looks a little bit better. So you go with this guy and he may not have like the same value. So if you get, it takes so much time for you to commit to a single movie if you have a, like a huge selection of movies, right? But yeah. back in the days, you only had Channel 3. Best believe I got to watch the soap opera until I like it. That's right. <laughs> That's so true. I like that. I like that example. That's actually spot on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and what about you, Carla, if I, uh, regarding my question I ask? Uh, honestly, I think um, 
it unintentionally makes you want to pick out people's insecurities. So that's why I really agree with you, um, Signaleo. So um, let's say like, I'm gonna put myself on a dating app and like I'm swiping and whatever. But to me, I, I don't see myself like looking for a relationship with that person because I'm looking, I'm focusing on the looks. I'm focusing on the way he's dressed. I'm oh, like like you said, like, oh, the nose, nah, I find better, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's not putting me in a position where I'm like, okay, like, he looks kind, like, oh, he, like, he looks like a family man. Oh, he, he owns like a cat or a dog. Mm. You know what I mean, it's like, it's showing me like, like, even like bio wise, like people don't actually like care about it. Like, they don't actually take the time to like write their bio, you know what I mean? Mm. So like, to like, be like, I don't know, like, oh, um, I, I speak this many languages and like this, this is actually like, yeah, this is, I'm, I think that's what their bio is like nowadays. Like if you go on Bumble and Tinder, oh, I speak this language, um, <laughs> I pay for it. They follow my, follow my IG. You know what I mean? Like they don't go in detail. So how am I supposed to know like if this is actually who I want as a man or even if I want to waste my time to even go on a date with you? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So It's the paradox of choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it kind of like cuts like the bullshit. Think about it. The bios like cut the bullshit. You know, yeah. you move forward with it. You no, know, there's no. It, it, it cuts also confrontation at the same time. You know, just like oh, I don't like this person. Ah, it's all good. Swipe, swipe right, swipe left, and then okay, move on. So it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. And uh, what about you, Nayeli? Yeah, I probably I would agree with everybody else. Honestly, I think that's that makes sense. You know, I think it's like. <laughs> people there's definitely there's definitely diamonds in the rough you know like people you know like um i see art you'll you'll get like kind of those situations where you're able to find someone and it just you click and it works out yep. but i think yeah like i'd have to agree with everybody else in the sense that it, it's hard to really see and like find a reason to build a kind of connection or a relationship with someone based like entirely on looks and like carla said like yes there's a bio but most most of the time it doesn't even actually have enough information to like make you want to reach out to that person i think there's exactly. definitely more they're coming up with more websites and more ways um to kind of build those connections and i think like bumble is a really good example of like you know the fact that women have to approach the man first and reach out to them first so they have the time to kind of go through all of the information that they have in the bio and i know some like websites will require you to fill out certain information so I think they're trying to push it, but I don't know if there's ever going to be like a situation where it'll entirely, dating will be done entirely online. Like even for the people that I'm sure have been dating throughout the pandemic, like there's only so much that you, so, so much connection that you can build online and over FaceTime and over like messaging, there's still so much that's in person, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't see those stats ever going any higher than that. That's fishing still there, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like I've, I've been saying before that like uh, online dating sites is very similar to like what when you have Instagram or when you have a Twitter profile. Well, I would say mostly Instagram because it's pretty much the same setup is you have a profile of someone, there's pictures, there might be a little bio or whatnot, like, you know, people on their Instagram, they're going to share some stories. So it's almost really the same issue. You're pretty much just choosing out of if okay, I'm going to go with like, okay, I would say this if I go with a, a girl, right? Because I, you know, I have a friend who, I remember one time she showed me her whole list of guys that she matched with, right? And I was like, yo, this is too, it's so crazy. It was like a hundred, right? And I was like, <laughs> I, like, how many of them do you even talk to out of the hundred? So I was like, oh, probably like 10. And I was like, damn, that's like, for guys that, that hurts because it's like, it's pretty much saying that like, girls have so many options that th they have to be so selective. So I think that's the, maybe the main reason why that online dating more often time it ends up in just being casual is because technology has made that we have too much options and we cannot focus really on one person. Like if you want to focus on one person, they really have to bring value to you. If they don't bring value like from the get-go, then it's like, oh, well, if there's a guy that's hotter or a vice versa girl that's hotter, I'm just going to talk to that person. Like I don't want to talk right. to you anymore. Exactly. They're popping up on your phone day to day. So it's like, if you, see what you like and you're not liking what you have, then that's game right there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I wanted to ask this too, right? So I think I sent the whole panel a little um, um, article study, right? And they talked about 
um, I think on that study it was most, mostly about girls. They did like a little experiment with a, a couple participant women and they asked them, hey, like when you go on your first date, what are your expectations slash standards that you have in the guy, right? And what most girls said was, oh, you know, I'm looking for a guy that's funny. I'm looking for a guy that's like this, that's like this. But then at the end of the article, the girl realized that when they actually liked a guy, some of them, some of their um, standards weren't, weren't really like matching what they initially wanted to have. Like when they said, yeah, I wanted a funny guy. Well, if the guy's really attractive, it's maybe not that funny, she'll still go for the guy. So that study made me think. So I wanted to ask everybody, like when you go on a first date, if you go on a date, what are your, your standards that you have in the other person? So who wants to start? Sigma Leo, do you want to start? You want me to go with someone else? I, I, I think <laughs> whoever's inspired, whoever's inspired can go, I'm thinking. Okay, okay. I, we can go maybe, Carla, do you have an answer? I don't mind. Um, standards for like, does like the way, like the way he presents himself count, for example? Yeah, like, well, standards really just like, okay, if you, okay, think of that scenario, right? You go on your first date with a guy, like what do you look for in a guy for, you know, mm -hmm. for him to have a potential to be with you long-term? Like, do you expect him to pull your chair, pay for the date, stuff like that? <laughs> yeah. Or even yeah. qualities and personality traits and all of that jazz. Too. Yeah, things about- in a Lambo, you know? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> material uh, stuff. The material stuff, you know what I mean? That's the last thing I look for in a guy. <laughs> um, I think if he can keep up a conversation, okay. I, I need a man who, who can talk, <laughs> you know what I mean? Who can like, who actually like shows interest. Like if you actually, like you're actually on this date with me to get to know me, not because you know, like, oh, like you saw my Instagram or whatever, like, no, because you want to get to know who Carla is. You know what I mean? Not who the Carla who presents herself on social media is like, you know, like if you ask me questions or, um, I don't know, like the, I think the last thing I'll look for is if he opens the door and all that stuff. Like, I mean, I mean, it matters, you know, cause it's like, it, it just shows manners, but that's not something I'll like be like, oh my gosh, he didn't open the door for me you know what, red flag, I'm not gonna talk to him anymore. You know what I mean? But <laughs> yeah, like mostly you keep up a conversation if he shows interest and um, I guess like a little bit, the way he dresses, like the way he, because they always say the, the first day you ever show up, you pull out your best outfit, you know what I mean? So like, I'm trying to see what your best outfit is. <laughs> so yeah. It's like showing up for a job interview, you, know, you, gotta, you gotta show them what they're working with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like the first impression is so important. So you got to make sure to look good or look, you know, good enough for the girl to be impressed. So no, I agree with that. Um, yeah. What about you, Nayeli? If I ask you the same question about like, what, like, well, I know now you're in a relationship, but if you were like, you know, just going on a date with someone uh, you know, in the past, like, what are your expectations slash standards in a guy? Or even in the, in the current partner you have now, like, how is that first <laughs> date do, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something, right? <laughs> True, true. Honestly, though, I'd agree with Carla, like when she said that being able to keep up a conversation is like probably number one for me, because there's nothing worse than like being the one that's trying to push the conversation and the other person is just not engaging at all. And you're just like, you feel like you're talking to a wall. <laughs> but um, yeah, about my current relationship, though, it's kind of funny because we don't really have like a, there wasn't like a natural progression per se, like we met and then it was like one of those situations where we're like kind of like having fun because it was right before I went to France. <laughs> so I wasn't looking for anything serious. And then when I got back, then we actually started dating. So I would say the other thing is definitely like commonality. So if like throughout the conversation, I'm finding that there's things that I have in common with that person or even if it's just like taste in music and obviously you don't have to have like these, you're not gonna have these big conversations about like how many kids do you want and mm -hmm. all of these like family life conversations on the first date, but like small things like, you know, maybe you're both not picky. You're, like you both like eat anything or are open to adventure or things like that. I think that's nice. That's nice to notice during that first kind of date, that initial meetup when you're able to see that you're, you're like, okay, you have things that you can con continue talking about and that you have in common. I think that's another one that's that's really big for me. Hmm. Okay. Like the Canadian hmm. aspect, I, I get it, but I've heard some stories from friends and other people where they met a guy and the guy's like very attracted to them. 
and he might not be the best speaker, but they still went on dates with that person. Does ha mm -hmm. has that ever happened to one of you, Carla or Nayeli, where a guy is maybe not the most talkative, but because of his looks, you kind of just disregarded that part? Not personally, <laughs> but Carla's nodding. <laughs> I don't know. I, I was young, you know what I mean? Well, okay. not, it was like maybe like three years ago, but yeah, no, it's happened to me before, yeah. Okay, okay. And yeah. did it end, oh, did it end bad or how did it end? I think it ended, it ended bad just because, you know, like you shrug up, oh, these red flags and you know like like no nothing in common all that you know what i mean just because you're so focused on the looks it's like you know like you're like okay uh -huh. looks but then after when everything keeps going you're like oh my gosh red flag oh my gosh red flag what am i getting myself into oh my gosh and then boom you know what i mean but <laughs> i think the more attracted you are to somebody the more red flags you can allow before you realize okay i have to cut it but it if they're like barely making your standard like they're you know a solid b plus It'd be like the first red flag is like, nah, I'm out. <laughs> but uh, I do, uh, I, I, I did think about something. Okay. It's like, it depends if I'm going on a date casually or if I'm going on a date um, with serious intent, like, okay, I'm down for a relationship with this person. Mm -hmm. My approach will be different and the red flags will be different. Mm -hmm. So let's say it's for casual. All I'm looking for is like that electricity. Okay, we have high, strong chemistry and we can flirt. We have good banter. That's for casual. And I don't really care about their past. Like if they tell me like, oh, I've cheated on my last boyfriend, that's not a red flag because I'm looking for casual. Yeah. Uh, but long-term, I'm looking more, that electricity matters a lot less. Like maybe the date is going to be like a solid B minus. I don't care. As long as they have strong, solid values, they get along with their family, I would give that person uh, a better chance because I know that for most people, attraction, you can build it up, right? It depends on your circumstances. Mm. If you're stuck on an island with, with a girl, eventually you're going to get get along well i mean assuming you guys are both cool people you're going to get along with that person yeah. so in this world where we have so many options if you decide that you're going to give your attention to someone for a long period of time eventually that chemistry or those butterflies can be can can you know it can arrive it doesn't have to be there from, from the start yeah, so yeah. long term i'll be waiting for like looking for values and casual i would be just looking for that electricity right off the bat Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Right. How about you, ICR? I know you got like both experiences, right? So why don't you hit us with that? Yeah, no. Um, in terms of just like casual and kind of the same, like uh, to me, it's like, are you a, are you a fun girl? Are you like to chill? And like, you get that spark, you know? And from then I'm like, oh, that's cool. I don't really care about anything else. Like, if that you fit that profile, let's go. Uh, when it comes to dating, uh, long term, uh, like, Back, piggybacking off that uh, uh, statistics, the, that report that he sent us. It's funny because, like, me, I'm always somebody who's like, I'm a social outgoing type of guy. So, mm -hmm. going into finding somebody long term, like, long term, really, I'm going, you know, social, fun, things like that. Uh, kind of like my vibe. But my girl's kind of like my polar opposite in a sense. Mm, you know? Like, but the one thing that's cool is that, like, she's more introvert, I'm more extrovert. We have a lot of things in common. If I'm inside being polar opposite, it's like, you yeah. know, glaring to me. It's like, oh, sometimes, you know, opposites do attract, you know? You just yeah. gotta bring that over. Okay, cool. interesting. Well, you said she's nice. introvert. She's not, is she shy or is she just introvert? Like, she's not as. Nah, like, she's more of like, you know, like, I'm the. I'm the flamboyant flamingo that's gonna like, you know, <laughs> pop a bottle of champagne and like go wild and perform in front of y'all. You know what I'm saying? Fireworks, confetti, you know, disco ball in the middle of the room, maybe throw some money in the air. He's more of the homebody, let's chill at home, watch a movie, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Campfire. I don't really like have a big social friend group, you know what I'm saying? You know, like, that's like know. literally my relationship as well. <laughs> you see? So like like I'm 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 out here like I am the party itself. You know what I'm saying? She's more like, yo, let's, let's chill, let's relax, you know? Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's the yin and yang right there. I like that. Oh, this is so interesting because lately, like, you know, I've been kind of started back to try to do online dating and everything. And one thing, even since I started the podcast, I've always said, I want to have a girl that's very talkative. Like, you know, they say, or like they say, girl, usually talk a lot, but I've kind of talked to some where it's like, it's actually the reverse. They don't talk as much and I have to do all the work. And at first, it, it might seem like, oh, you know what I mean? It's cool and everything. I'm kind of getting annoyed by it. I'm not going to lie to you. 
I'm trying to find a girl that's very talkative. Because I think now in my stage of my life and like my confidence level too, if you're too shy, I don't know if really opposite is going to work for me. I mean, I know Nayeli and I said said that like who are you and Nayeli? Is it your boyfriend or is it you? Like what is the, who's the more talkative and who's kind of more the introvert in your relationship? I'm definitely more of the introvert, <laughs> funnily enough. So if you, if I'm an introvert, you can imagine how extroverted he is. But um, yeah. I like to say I'm the most like extroverted introvert you'll ever meet because oh, like that. I'm kind of like <laughs> a CR's girlfriend that I'm a homebody. I like to keep it chill. I'd rather stay home. <laughs> Yeah. But um, yeah, no, and he's definitely more out there. He has a big friend group, you know, he, we, it's funny, we met dancing, we were doing choreography for a charity show. So he's like very much like the, the performer. <laughs> I see, I see. But uh, it, it works again, if you have commonalities at the very base, like the actual like values and certain things like that, then you can be polar opposites in terms of personalities. And I think, I think it, it works, it balances itself out. That's what, that's what helped. If we had nothing in common, I would have been like, yeah. Nah, just, yeah. I, I may be it. completely wrong on this and girls correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but I feel like the whole talkative thing, it doesn't matter if you're timid or outgoing, being talkative, if the girl is into you, she's going to be talkative, especially like during those first meetings. Because I like she feels that same pressure that you feel like she doesn't want to be boring, so she's gonna be talkative, and but if she's being like quiet, sometimes it's because they're not as interested. That's that's how I view it. So so you're saying that it's a, like they're kind of like they're well well yeah they're not interested but they are kind of like a lying slash capping they're not really because they say I feel like lying. being quiet is not a. a whether they're shy or timid or not, mm -hmm. it's more about like their in, um, interest level. It has more to do with that. Interesting. Interesting. I think it definitely depends on the person, I'd say. Because <laughs> I've definitely been in situations where also like it depends kind of on like their kind of personal history dating because sometimes maybe they've come off as being too talkative and it's maybe feedback that they've received and now they're afraid to talk too much and like take over the conversation. So they're letting you talk. Um, I know like that's, I've seen situations like that. I've had friends that have been in those situations or yeah, or they could honestly be shy. I, I think to a certain extent, yes, it could depend on whether or not like they're really interested and whatnot. I think personally, if I'm really interested in someone I will find something to talk about. <laughs> um, but I think it really depends on the person. Okay, okay, interesting. Cool. And yeah. I actually have another question too here. So, you know, I've heard that Whole little debate about the whole first date, right? So, you know, you go on a first date, who should pay for the meal or for the date? So, is it the guy? Is it the girl? Should it be 50 50? Like, what's the deal about it, right? So, I want to ask like everybody this. here, but you know what, Khalilo, I know we're the host, we want to have their guests talking too. But I want to yeah. hear, I never, I, I actually don't know Khalilo's perspective, philosophy on this whole thing. Khalilo, let me uh, ask that, you this. Okay. What is your perspective on it? Like, should the guy pay on the first date? Like the girl, how did I get my mouth shut? I was just like, I'm all ears for this one. I was ready to hear everybody else's answer. <laughs> but okay, to, just to break the ice, I mean, I would say, like, um, let's see, because if if I'm inviting a girl somewhere and it's like, you know, oh, you know, she ne maybe never been there or anything like that, then naturally I feel like, okay, I'll want to treat her to that place, right? You know, give her the best kind of experience. So like, I'll I'll always try to be prepared to to pay for both. Right. So, I mean, if, if she wants to hop in and say something, then that's cool. Like, kudos to you. But like, I'll probably just, you know, I'll probably still pay because I want to give you that experience. You know, I want to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Right. Like if, if she wants to bring me someplace, like, I mean, I'm just the kind of person I, I like, I'll be ready to pay for myself. If she if she offers, then that's that's cool. You know, we'll probably have like a little banter about that or whatever. But like, <laughs> like, you yeah. know, that's the, the fact that she offered. I mean, that's pretty dope. Right. So, I mean, that. If I, if I were to have a rule on that, I don't know. I would say like, if you're trying to if, if you're trying to show me or I'm trying to show you something or bring you someplace, then maybe you know I, I should pay unless if there's a mutual understanding that's like 50-50, which should be the bare minimum. Like that should be like maybe the ideal uh, way. Like no one should really expect anybody else to pay. Like it just. I don't know. Like I, I I'm gonna toss it to you guys because I'm kind of <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and now I'm just like, uh, words. Yeah. yo, I see her. You want to say something? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, me. Up. 
me on a personal note because I always feel like I'm the one initiating everything. So if I'm leading the data, I'm gonna pay. Like that's kind of my emotion. I'm taking you out on this one, that. Like I'm, I'm leading the dance. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So like mm-hmm. I'll, I'll pay the tab. Okay, whatever. Like I'm cool with that. Like if she, because I don't expect her. I don't expect the person I'm taking out like to pay. <laughs> like I'm not like to be honest. Like don't get me wrong. Like if you want to do it, that's cool. But like mm-hmm. I would not have the intention of being like, yeah, you are take a look at and be like split this year, we'll fit together. Nah, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm leading the dance, so follow with me, mm-hmm. whatever. Like, I'm cool with that. Right. It's definitely nice to have a girl that offers. We know it's cute because most of them would just be sitting back like that. Yeah, yeah. But if she <laughs> if she offers, that's nice. But I agree. I agree with Alex. Like, listen. I'm, I'm a bit traditional, but I'm the man, I'm leading the dance. And you got to be responsible for that date, especially if you've initiated. It's, it's your job to be, okay, we're going to go there. We're going to go here. Um, I'm taking care of you. I'm paying the date. It shouldn't even be a debate, honestly. Mm-hmm. Facts. Like, you, you want to show her a good time. It's like, oh, you've never been here before? Okay, cool. Like, let's go. And then It's like salsa, you know? Somebody's leading the dance. And with um, authority comes responsibility. Hmm. Okay. Like and what about the ladies? What about the I ladies? Hear the, I want to hear the, the second element. So <laughs> if I ask you, like, do you, like, if I ask you, if it's Carla or Nayeli, do you expect, if you go on a date, do you expect the guy to pay for you? Or, like, what is your mindset on the whole, who should pay on a date? I know, go ahead. That's a good question. <laughs> I got two things to say about that, actually. Sure. So I agree with ICR. I am. Um, I believe that if you're asking me on a date, then I'm just kind of like expecting you to pay just because you asked me. Like I'm. I wasn't the one who made the plan. Like oh, like let's go out for this fancy dinner or not even fancy. Like even like I don't know, like burgers and fries, like from the streets or something. I don't care. You know what I mean? But like, but um, I come from this um from a Lebanese culture where the girls are raised to believe that the man always has to pay you know what i mean yeah Yeah. weird like whether it comes to bills or it comes to like lunch dinner whatever but with me personally like i don't mind us like if let's say like we're actually becoming serious in the relationship whatsoever you know what i mean i'll split 50 50 with you you know like like let's say like like we're going on a date, okay, like, you can pay, but, like, throughout the week, let's say, like, oh, I'm hungry, let's go past, the, like, I don't know, A&W or something, we'll get food, I'm not gonna expect you to pay for me, like, I'll pay for myself, I got it, you know what I mean, so, like, 50-50, I don't mind, and I feel like, I think every time I've gone on a date, I've always offered, because it's just who I am, and we're raised that way, like, you always have to offer, like, you yeah. know, like, be polite, do do it, you know what I mean, but, yeah. You know, I've heard from Lebanese women that sometimes they would just um, give their car to their man so the man can always pay even if they're the one paying <laughs> yeah. you know, i think that's kind of, that's kind of cool i don't know uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> slip it under the table <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah i i would probably have to agree if you're taking me out and you're initiating it then i would probably expect you to pay same thing i would also offer You know, I've always been like very financially independent, you could say. So I'm always happy to like pay my part or even pay the bill. But obviously we'll have, like you said, Khalid will have the little banter about like (laughs) who's paying. And then it's fun, you know, it builds like the kind of the connection. Um, But I'm also the type, yeah, I'm also the type that has like a lot of suggestions when it comes to places to go. And like, I'm a huge foodie, so I always know like, you know, really good restaurants to go to. And sometimes like if I'm the one that's offering or suggesting that we go somewhere, like I'm happy to pay it. And then obviously they'll probably argue and whatever, then they'll have the other situation again. But I, yeah, (laughs) I'm always happy to pay my part. (laughs) But if the guy wants to pay, I'm not going to argue more than just, you know, say something. (laughs) You won the argument. Okay, you you, you can pay. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, what about you, Rev? I'm going to toss it to uh, you, you know? <laughs> why do you, why do you? No, I will answer, I will answer. So, honestly, the way I've, you know, I've just been brought up, I've, you know, from my family and everything, I always, like, I always, if I go on a date, I feel like I always need, not saying always need to pay, but I'm generous. So, like, especially with my friends, family, like, I don't mind sharing my money 
because once I once I fuck with you, then it's like I don't look at money the same. Like it's not like oh yeah. damn, I'm scared I'm gonna lose some money in my bank. Like I don't mind spending if I go on a date. So I remember last series that I went on, I paid. Like I remember the girl. I went. I was a bit there earlier. I paid for like I think it was like coffee or something. I start not Starbucks. I had a second cup, and I bought like two second cup drinks, and paid already in advance. Because I don't know for me it's like I feel like especially if I invite you to the date, I feel like a man should always pay. Like if you ask the girl like, hey, I'm kind of struggling. Can you maybe pay 50-50? <laughs> I think, yeah. Like probably you're not going to go on the second date, man. That, don't kill that, me. Don't, don't kill that, me. That's a turn yeah. off. So I mean, in high school, it was a different thing, you know? Yeah. True, yeah. true. We didn't have much money. But now, like, as young adults, and especially if you work, it's like you don't really have excuses in terms of going somewhere on a date and not having your wallet or not having <laughs> money. It's like, right. oh. come on. I, I have um, a quick thing that I want to add to what you're saying, and at least a good question, actually. Mm-hmm. I feel like men, when it comes to dating, they have the burden of performance. And it is what it is. I don't think it's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. But if as a man, you have to split the bill 50-50, I think you shouldn't even be dating. You should, you should have other priorities. Ooh. Mm-hmm. So my that- question would be for um, people, women and the men on the panel, who do you think is harder? Um, dating is harder for men or for women Ooh. in 2021? That's a good one. Can we have the ladies go first? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, ladies first. Yeah, you know. I think it's harder for women for one reason personally okay um yeah. now with social media i feel like we're competing with so many girls around the world mm-hmm. <laughs> that men are just like mm-hmm. online shopping constantly even if they're like not everyone i'm not trying to put you know what i mean but like let's say you're in a relationship men can easily go and be like oh this girl's cute you know what i mean mm-hmm. so like it makes it even harder because that means like i'm like down like you know what I mean? Like now I gotta compete with you, I gotta compete with you, whatever. But obviously at the end of the day, it's all about confidence and how confident you are in yourself. But also the men like adds on to your confidence. You know what I mean? Like he plays he plays a role in it too. Mm. But personally, I think it's harder for women for just that one reason only. Hmm. What's your or does anybody have a rebuttal? I see Frankie over there. Well, I have a little <laughs> rebuttal. <laughs> <laughs> um, it depends on which men you're dating because saying that the men it's competitive for you means that the man has a lot of options and men who have a lot of options that's the minority mm-hmm. so you must be looking at like maybe you have a lot of high standards that's why you're ending up with guys with a lot of options because most guys they struggle to find even one girl Ooh. That is true. it kind of reminded me of like um, the whole on- online dating thing that uh, frank brought up right because it was like oh you know uh, women have so many options you know they have like people hopping in their dms like daily right but then like uh for men it might be like oh they get one one girl a week that's happening in their dms yeah. right so i mean i feel like it, it kind of maybe goes both ways um depending on like who you are or who you're after like uh, sigma said yeah but that's why for me like I, I have to disagree with carla like i understand her perspective but that's why i'm saying it's like because you have so many options i don't see how that would be um uh, a negative like for guys it's very like to get to get a lot of girls, you need to build up value to the point where they're very interested and you get a lot of them. But for girls, like from, I mean, maybe even 18, 19, 20, if you look pretty and you have a nice little Instagram page, you're gonna have a lot of guys that's gonna DM you. Even if you're probably not interested, <laughs> yeah, like on like yeah. 99.9% of them, you you would find probably at least a couple of them that have like potential probably. But for guys, it's harder to build up uh, a crazy ass roster like that like you really have to work to build up to that that would be my rebuttal slash disagreement i don't know if maybe Carla- i would <laughs> add just for women <laughs> <laughs> i would say that yes obviously we've done a lot of progress throughout the years but i think that there's still a lot of double standards and stigmas towards women that are single and that stems a lot from you know men seeing these women and they're beautiful and they're wondering, okay, if she's beautiful and she's single, what's wrong with her? Mm. And I think that's something that comes up a lot. 
you know, you'll get a lot of questions about, oh, like how were were your last relationships? Like, you know, a lot of women get dubbed like the crazy girlfriend, like a crazy ex-girlfriend, or they think that there has to be something wrong with them if they're beautiful and they're smart and, you know, they check off all of the items on their list, but they're single. So I think that makes it really hard for a lot of women that are single and trying to date to kind of have to prove themselves that maybe there's nothing wrong with them. And even if there is, like, mm-hmm. to find someone that would kind of not judge them for whatever, you know, happened in their past and whatever their past relationships were. And I think that's where a lot of the difficulties for women dating comes from. I'm actually going to agree with both Nayeli and Carla. I think it's easiest for men who have done the work. So if I can say it's easiest for the men who are in that top 10, 20%, because the study show in dating apps that women found 80% of the guy on dating apps ugly. So it's basically 20% of the men sharing 80% of the girls. So it's a lot more competitive for the girls because girls, it's almost like if you're not a top 20% of men, you're invisible, right? Yep. So they don't even want to hear about you if you're not like that specific archetype that they're looking for. Their standards are a lot higher. They're much, a lot more picky than guys. Guys kind of get what they can, but women, they don't settle. So these high value males are like this little club who are basically having the advantage, like Carla said, um, they have so many options. So it's easiest for them. Then I would say it's obviously easier for the women because they can have like this dual mating strategy. They find that one guy who's actually like solid that can take care of them. But at the same time, it's easier for women to replace a guy, right? But at the end of the day, it's going to be hardest for the guy who didn't do the work. So it would be like, I'd say the top men, like the top 10% men, then the rest of the women, then the rest of the guys. That would be my order. Interesting. Okay. I mean, I see. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, shit. I mean, I still feel like it's harder for the man just because if I'm even on this pool level, like the average guy doesn't really have that many options than the average girl does. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And even going, I know when it comes to high value women, they won't settle. But <clears throat> excuse me, they won't settle, but they would still have a lot more like options than the high value man. You know what I'm saying? Like it just to me, I just feel like girls will always have the option to just be like, I can. You can really it's date. true, but because I like, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I just feel like, you know, average girl will have a lot more popping DMs than you would. You know what I'm Facts. saying? But it's not yeah. about having the options. It's about having the options that she want back. Mm. That is true. I mean, that like, becomes a whole different. That becomes a whole different conversation than if you talk about. <laughs> that if I want the, I want this specific person, then it's kind of like I. Right, and yeah, I guess it could go either way. But I talk about just like the dating world in general. You know what I'm saying? I was just thinking like, bro, like the average dude, just a dude in general, would probably be like, ah, eh, you know, we still gotta give arm and leg because you know, if I'm five four and the girl I like is five uh-huh. eight. Uh, you should- <laughs> You might not want me, but if I make a hundred, if I make a, a certain amount of men or I have like this specific like personality, then maybe, but then compared to the six foot guy, will I have a chance? Uh, uh, you know, so it's like, there's a lot of these things in general. But to so piggyback I- on what Nayeli was saying earlier, guy, <laughs> girls kind of have like this um, time clock as mm-hmm. in not only a biological time clock, but a social um time clock you know if they're staying single for too long it's getting a bit weird for m- most of their um mating partners and a lot of people will be like oh she's 30 man like we, we're gonna have to rush to have kids so guys it's like if you take care of yourself you kind of like you're gonna age like wine as in people are gonna look at you um it's not only your your looks that matters to girl it's your charisma um the security you can provide to her there's a lot more but guys were a lot more shallow as in looks are our main thing so I think if a guy decides to work on himself, it's going to be a lot easier for him. If he doesn't, I agree with you 100%. But if his priorities are straight and he works on himself, then dating world is going to become his oyster. But that's, yeah, but that's where it's like, that's why I'm still leaning toward the men is more to go because if we talk about like confidence, for example, right? Not everybody's going to reach uh, like a great type of confidence very early. Some, it might take them you know, more time. So because of that, because of that, some are kind of just going to be at a disadvantage from the beginning, just because if they don't have the confidence, then how are how they going to like talk to the girl, to the woman, rather than if you're a girl, you don't even need to be the most confident, talkative girl. And you'll still have guy that's going to come up to you, trying to holla, trying to, trying to see like, Hey, what's up? 
But as a guy, if you're not confident, you're not assured of yourself, you're not gonna get anything. So that's where, and I feel like yeah. that's like a, a big- It's kind of both ways, don't you think? Cause it's like a perspective thing, right? Like right. With the permission before was that like, um, what's that? You know, it's like, is there a problem with me at the end of the day? Right? It's like, you know, as a woman, it's like, is, is there a problem with like, you know, how come I'm like single, but I'm like this age and everything like that. So I feel like maybe they might, they might go into relationships thinking uh, differently from like that kind of perspective where it's like, they'll be more focused on like trying to analyze and see maybe what's going on with them as opposed to, oh, is this guy the guy that I want? Maybe they like the guy, but then it's just like, if you do like the guy, and maybe, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you do like the guy, then it, the, the focus or the spotlight turns more towards yourself. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> hmm. No, I would agree. And kind of to rebuttal what Frankie said, <laughs> I think, and kind of play off of what Sigma Leo said earlier is that, yes, men might not have the confidence from the very start, but they have a much longer period where they mm -hmm. are eligible to be in the dating scene. So by the time that they're able to develop that confidence, they have more time. Whereas women, like Sigmilia mentioned, like we have a biological clock and a lot of people would expect us to get married by a certain age. Yeah, but right? it could be 35 and be an eligible bachelor. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, mean, okay. yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, if you talk about like who has the more like longer peak than I, okay, yeah. So like a man will have a longer peak than a woman would just because like, yeah. you know, yeah, of course, we'll age at 35, 40, I might have a stable life and then I could do what I got to do. But I don't know. I was just thinking I'm just right. The right now, the average dude, regardless, I still feel with some would be at a disadvantage. That's just my opinion. Yeah. You're also mm -hmm. mistaken kind of like attention and actually dating. Like, yes, it's right. easy for women to get a lot of attention. So yes, the options are there, but I find that go. when it comes to actually dating, it might be a lot easier for men because once they've found someone that, you know, they have good rapport or whatever with, I find that that goes on a lot easier than for a lot of women, because like Khalilo said earlier, we tend to like internalize and start really analyzing everything once we've found someone and for dating specifically, that might make it a little bit harder for us. And it could be something that we're bringing on to ourselves. It's not to say that there's external factors to it. So on DeMarco, because you see, at the end of the day, I think Frankie, you're putting men lenses into like a female. It's like you, if a random woman comes out at the mall, you're going to be think it's tight because it doesn't happen often, but for them it's, it's common. So it's not special anymore. So at the end of the day, these options are kind of frugal. Like, yes, I know half of these guys would probably sleep with me, but that doesn't mean shit. How are like, how much of these guys are actually like, suitable um for like a long term or even a short term and that's that's hard to find yeah okay okay no i love the points i love the points i'm still gonna keep my my, my perspective but hey <laughs> i'll bring it from intelligent point to so each their own <laughs> I, 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 might, I, might change, I might change my perspective in five years but for now i'm i'm still respectful discourse that's what it is yeah exactly exactly yeah that's what conversation for days is all about right <laughs> the okay. collision of different perspectives i, I like that i like that <laughs> and also yeah. like you know just off the topic of this week why we chose the topic is to you know because you know now you know we live in ottawa right things are starting to open up you know right. the COVID and everything bars restaurants patios and whatnot so if i ask everybody if you have to make a prediction like it doesn't have to be necessarily just for the summer but maybe for like the rest of the coming, you know, months, year or so, like, how would, how would you think the dating scene is, is it going to change? Is it going to be the same? What would be your opinion on that? I think a lot more people are going to go online. Like I'm online, she, and I, I don't even thought, <laughs> think that I was going to go on freaking yeah. online dating apps, but at some point people are going to rely a lot more on online dating. So we might have a lot of Eskimo brothers <laughs> or Eskimo sisters. <laughs> That's my theory. I think a lot of people are going to be like, oh, you're dating her too? Like, I'm dating her as well. You know what I mean? I think like a lot of, like, I might date a girl that like Kalilo is dating too on the low. We don't even know because everybody's just on dating apps. Or oh, so at least talking to her. That's my theory. So it's like that. That's my hypothesis. So it's like that, huh? Okay, okay, okay. okay. All right, well. Ottawa, I mean, you're not, yeah, it's probably not far off. But uh, what I was going to say, um, I think it, the dating scene, 
I think it's going to be booming. I don't know if it's going to, I think people are, were online during COVID, but I feel like because things are opening up, you know, we, we're going to see a lot more like conversations at patios, a lot more conversations at bars, a lot more like in-person meetings, you know what I'm saying? Because like the thing about like, the thing about online thing that you won't get, it's just a vibe of people, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like going out and buying people and being like, yo, like how you know how you been? I don't know how you been. No, no, no. Just on the third and you're just vibing and just like having a drink and being like, damn, like you're really like enjoying like the, the presence and the moment and shit. It's like I think we're gonna see a lot more of that than anything else. And that's what's been missing too. So I mean it'll be nice to hop back into that. I know everybody's gonna be like ready to that, you know, to their degree. As long as you're not like a hella introvert, then it's, it's <laughs> that's gonna fascinate you. <laughs> No, that's true. That's true. And what about you, Carla? What would be your your prediction on how things will go in the dating scene post COVID? I think, I think people are going to be going out and to meet in person more because of the dating app, the online dating apps. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, I think online dating apps now are going to lead to in person dating, and because people are like you know like we've been quarantined, we've been locked down, everything, so people want to meet people like. Mm-hmm. like whether it's like to date or even just to get to know each other like let me just meet yeah. you you know what i mean like let me talk to a human being yeah mm-hmm. you know what i mean like i don't know and maybe you guys can click and it doesn't have to be like you know like that flirty one it could be like this bond that like oh you like hiking dope i like hiking too like let's just go hiking and you know and the next thing you know you guys are just friends you know what i mean but honestly i think for the dating scene it's like post-covid yo you're gonna walk in the bar you're gonna see everyone sitting in the patio on a date <laughs> I've already seen that. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Really, but I really think too, like I've been saying to people like, yo, people, oh, I don't know if that's the right word to say, like people are hungry. Like not hungry, like they're hungry. Like, they're thirsty. Over GP, ma. Over GP, ma. Oh, man. Like, people want to people wanna go out and have fun. And actually, I think my prediction would actually be that there'll be a lot more of casual relationship I don't know if it's going to be good for a relationship. That's the thing, because we've been locked down for so long that I think most people are just wanting to have something for fun that's, like, short yeah. term. But I don't know if most people are ready to really be in, like, actual relationship, because I think it's just people just want something fun because they didn't have fun for the last year. That's my prediction. That's true. I mean, There's I, two sides of this coin, right? Okay. Can we look ahead? No, yeah. no. I was uh, Actually, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> I would say there's two sides of the coin. Like, there, yes, there's the people who just want to have fun. But mm-hmm. from, an anecdot- anecdot- from an anecdotal perspective, I think yeah. a lot more people are just trying to, like, a lot of people that I've talked to found themselves during quarantine. Like, be- they became a lot more mature. They're like, you know what? I'm not even about that life that I was having before. Yeah. And I feel like, like those people are going to be ready for something more serious and meaningful. But definitely what Carla was saying earlier, like dating apps before, it was a lot more easy to just bullshit my way out. Like I'm talking to people, but I'm not going to actually meet them. I think people are going to be a lot more serious about meeting people face to face because they're craving that connection. Interesting. 100%. Do you even just like, it's exactly what I was going to be saying too. Cause it's like, uh, ideally, you know, quarantine gave people opportunity to reassess themselves and what they actually value out of life. Right. So now the people who actually did that, they're hopping out of quarantine, looking for relationships that like fit that mold. Right. So, I mean, yeah, it's 100 percent what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And not only that, but also like quarantine was trying on a lot of relationships. And like I know a lot of people that broke up. Right. And it might be the first time that they're actually newly single and able to go out now that things are opening up. So that's like a whole other ball game. There's a bunch of other people that are going to be like on the market. Yeah, looking so, for yeah, that. I, 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know for a fact right now. People are gearing up for their best dress right now. They're gonna look their flies. I'm not, not, not even like no cap. I just feel like people have been working, people have been waiting, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Online shopping has been an all-time high. They've been flies. working out. That's what people are ready to just be like pull up, look they flyest. And then people been working out. Be, that's why I, I still feel like it, it might still be more of a casual thing because it's summertime, you know what I'm saying? Let me, let me, let me not like invest my stuff fully just yet. Because that's what winter, that's what cuffing season is. You know what I'm saying? Cuffing season is like a oh, winter time. It's like yeah. where people are like, ah, you know what I'm saying? Let me like cuff up. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be a long, cold one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> winter is coming. Got out. You know, <laughs> I got out. I'm like, the, the butterfly has come out of the cocoon. It's time for me to show who I am now. You know what I'm saying? This new level of confidence. This new intellectual like mind. You know? 
I am not who I was quarantine time ago. You know, <laughs> like I'm the new person. Very true. Shout out, shout out uh, to this brother right here for coming through with that Pima. <laughs> Five flames on that, bro. <laughs> oh, I actually have a weird question about like what I said, talk about the whole like, you know, dressing better and dress for the occasion. So to the girls, actually, to Nayeli and Carla. So if you see a guy attractive and like his dress is like off, like off the chain, like it's 10 out of 10, like crazy, right? Would you actually approach the guy or are you more of like, you always want the guy to approach you? I like that question. Mm. Because I've heard like, <laughs> like Sigma Leo brought it up before how guys, we have to perform, right? So that's one aspect of it where oftentimes how society has been is like, the guy always mm. have to make the first move. There is times where I've heard, you know, girls have done the first move, but it's kind of rare. Like it's not often, you don't see it. Yeah. So Guys are the performers. Yeah, man, we, we shoot, but, don't pass. That's why it's so easy for us to be the clowns, right? Everybody's making memes, guys, like this guy's a clown because we have to perform. True, true. Oh, man. We, we oh, take yeah. the last book. Yeah. No, it's true. I, yeah, if I ask, uh, well, either Nayeli or Carla, like, uh, would you ever, or have you, or would you ever approach a guy? Yeah, I would. Okay. And I think, um, <laughs> there was one summer where I was just like it wasn't even like intern like it wasn't for like you know like oh I'm gonna approach you to pursue you I kind of just wanted to like practice my confidence so like I go and viral and I just like like I approached the cop like went to oh, wow. go to <laughs> but that was just a practice for my acting it wasn't even for anything else I just wanted to like boost up my confidence and deal with that rejection and stuff you know what I mean so like there was like a whole different reason for it but yes I would like um Sometimes, like, let's say, like, if the guy's, like, you know, like, like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. really good looking, like, I don't know why I, I wouldn't approach him, but because it's just not my type. Okay. I don't know why, but. So you don't like good looking guys? Yeah. No. <laughs> like, those, like, perfect looking men, I don't know why. I just would not approach them. They're just not my type whatsoever. Like, I'll approach the men I don't mind. But if you're like, I don't know, like super like well dressed and like acting all like, like not cocky, like I don't want, I want to use like a different word. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you know, like you know, you're good looking, like you know, like this girl's looking at you, like, I'm, like I'm not, I'm not gonna what? Go <laughs> Damn. I agree, I agree, I agree. You know, it's the girl's name, I guess I don't know. <laughs> wait, wait, I want to hear Nayeli's thought. Yeah, Nayeli, say what you want about say the whole two good. Like, you dress too good? I, I, I don't understand. <laughs> it's just like those men that you know, they walk around yeah. and they get like the attention from everyone. And personally, I think it's super intimidating the same way that I'm sure men find that women that are like that are very intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just like, I wouldn't even try for that because I'm like, honestly, nah. <laughs> He'd probably look at me and be like, all right, Like you thanks. think you think like, it's for the streets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he belongs to the streets. <laughs> So, I'm dead. Wait, wait, so, I'm dead. That's my theory. Yeah, so when you see those type of guys, do you have a feeling that they're probably like a, a F boy or a bad boy? Is that probably we can why? Tell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, probably. I think if I get the vibe that like he's super well dressed, he's super attractive, he has like a confidence, but like he looks humble, like he looks like low key, then maybe yeah, I would like probably just be like, hey, like like your shirt or Ever. I would love to say that I'm the type of person that would approach a guy, but chances are I likely wouldn't. I would probably walk by and give him some looks and kind of scout it out if he's giving me looks back. And then maybe we can like start talking. Is that talking. how you approach? Is that how you approach men? It's a, it's a, it's a look, look it's back. A look. Maybe. Has to give you the it's a very specific look. It's the up and down look, oh. you know? And then they look oh, okay, away. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a tactic. Well, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, like, okay, you see, you see a woman and she's like, yo, top 10, but she knows she's top 10 and you know she's getting like DMs in, in the, by the bucket pool, you know? So it's like, if, if you know she's feeling herself and she knows that like, oh, okay, I can get you by the hook just like that. I mean, would that, would, are you still attracted? Will you still, you know, pursue? Or would that kind of be a turnoff to, it's, uh, to that degree? Hmm. It, it depends on her character. Like, how do you behave with me? You know, you can have this whole persona for your social media, but as long as you behave correct with me, then we're not going to have any problem. But I, I will say this, though. 
your the Instagram has to be humble. To me, the turnoff is more of how do you present yourself on your social media? Mm-hmm. Is it like a social media that I can, you know, show my mother with no explanation? Mm-hmm. And th- that's more of um, how I would judge this whole turnoff thing. But you can be like a 10 out of 10. If your behavior is correct, then it's not going to be a turnoff for me. But if you just see her in the streets and she's walking around looking gorgeous, like how would oh, yeah. you know something about her character or Instagram or anything? Yeah, I approach her. I, I like a, yeah, I like yeah. Who know who she is? That's mm-hmm. my guess. I like a woman who knows who she is. That she's like, yo, like I, this is who I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like and those like, are the best uh, interactions. Like when you holla at a girl, if she's like, if she's feeling herself, it's gonna be funny, you know, because she's used to it. The last thing that a guy wants when he approaches a girl is for the girl, and I understand where it's coming from. But for the world to feel like super weirded out, like, oh shit, like, like you're going to punch her or something. But if the girl is just like used to it, you can actually like flirt and she can reject you, but it's going to be fun at least. Yeah. And she gets to go home with a nice story, you know, like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah. Going back to your question, because I mean, like the whole, like, that's what, that's where, like, uh, when I said the whole thing about the dating of like, you know, hiding your Instagram and everything for three months, I actually think in a good way, actually the girl, if you date a girl you shouldn't be getting her instagram that quick because then like kind of sigma leo said it can actually become a turnoff because if i go on your social media and i'm like man this girl okay like her picture she's beautiful and everything but it's maybe not what i want you know what i mean or it's maybe too much for me then it's going to become a turnoff but if i don't know and i'm just dating out of just because you know your personality is dope your character is dope everything's dope from the you know face-to-face interactions then yeah that's fine but once i get you know instagram naturally i'm gonna have a bias i can't i can't really control that bias you know so that'll be my opinion yeah Yeah. i like what you brought up about the whole you know (laughs) is your profile something i would show my mother you know that's (laughs) i really like that that made me think i was just like oh snap yeah (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. my question my question to you vic or to everybody on the panel have you showed your significant others social media handles to your parents do y'all did, did you do yeah. that i do it all the time i don't, I don't. Like, my mom follows my boyfriend <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> wow like, comments on his pics <laughs> wow okay he must be a good guy though if, you, if, you, if she's giving him that level of respect <laughs> what about the rest of the panel i mean my dad follows me on facebook but people doesn't really count but like instagram and things of that nature nah i never I never show that to my parents. I don't know. I, they're not very like social media type of people. So I really don't think it's like necessary for me to actually show them my Instagram. But they know about my my podcast. But Instagram, no. I'm going to say, I'm going to say that it, it doesn't really matter if I show them or not. Like if they hear that I'm in a relationship, they're going to do, they're going to do their own research. Exactly. Ah, exactly. Yes, so, yes, yes. so that's, that, that's why I was just like, I really like your, your, your statement there. Cause it's like, oh, okay, you know, when they do search her up, is this gonna be something I'm gonna be comfortable with them seeing? <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, or is it gonna True. give me a different impression of who I know? You know, and um, yeah, to that degree, I'm just like even with like, uh, yeah, to that degree, it's like that, <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Well, actually, going off of that whole social media, I want to ask, like, I want to hear hear like the girl perspective on that one. So imagine that scenario. You go out with a guy or, you know, well, not really, you got a boyfriend, but like if, if it's your boyfriend or someone you're hanging out with or like in relationship with says to you, hey, um, I don't want you to have like a social media platform, right? Or something like that. They want you to just be like, kind of like, no, nah, I don't want you to be on social media, be active at all. Is that, would you actually sacrifice a social media for a guy ever or no? Oh, that makes me wonder what kind of guy it would take, <laughs> you know? Woo! <laughs> just, yeah, just a, you know, question, yeah. So I want to hear, you know, Nayeli or Carla, what's your opinion about that? I, I saw Nayeli shaking her head, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, I would say no, because honestly, if yes. he's controlling about that, I can just imagine about what other things he'd be controlling over. And like, personally, I work in social media. That's like literally my job. So I need to be on these things to like be aware of what's going on and whatnot. And I think, yeah, I I think if someone's wanting to control whether or not you're on a certain platform, that's a them issue, not a me issue. And they should deal with that on their own. 
and without me. <laughs> well, let's make it a bit harder. Let's say he's the perfect guy for every, anything else, but he wants that one thing. Does that change your answer or no? Then he's obviously not the perfect guy because there's a certain <laughs> level there that, <laughs> yeah, the that makes respect. me question. <laughs> That's so good. What um, about you, Carla? But you threw, you threw, yeah, but no, go ahead, Carla. <laughs> I think it's the same thing for me because my my social media plays a big part in my career. So mm -hmm. if you're telling me to deactivate my social media, you're basically telling me to let go of my career. And for me, my career should matter to you as much as it matters to me. Mm -hmm. So if you don't care about my career, then I can't really be with you. Because like, okay, let's say like I'm super in love with you. I want to marry you and everything. You know what I mean? So like, I if let's say like you tell me, okay, you know what? social media is just it's either social, like your career or me that's basically what you're asking you know what i mean yeah. obviously i'm gonna my career as much as i love you i must still go with my career because like yeah. it's who i am you're telling me yeah. to let go of who i am for exactly. you that's selfish you know what i mean like work on your insecurities and then maybe we'll talk like why do i have to do yeah. things for you <laughs> yeah. is, is your career over love is that what i'm doing? yeah I was just gonna quickly say I see a lot of things up there talking Wait, about uh, can't handle the heat, get out the kitchen, all that stuff. You know. I, <laughs> but the question that I would have for the ladies is, I think Frankie's questions ends up being, would you rather be fifty with your career and single, or fifty with a man you love but you don't have your career? I think that's the question he wanted to to ask. No, with the I feel yeah. perfect man, like you, you feel like you found this guy that like you're willing to take that plunge. With. Because if you think about it in a relationship, well, I'm not saying social media has to be the sacrifice, but you have to make a sacrifice somewhat, somewhere. Yeah, so but why should I sacrifice my career for you if you can't no, sacrifice? No, no. Your well, you know what I mean? Because you're making money out of it. I, if if, if it's, that's your for business purposes, I get it. But if in a scenario where you have social media, but you only use it for the fun of it, there's no money involved, would you be oh, more okay. then? Okay. Would that be different or would it still be important yeah. for you to have it? No, that thing for me, that would be a different, that would be different for me, different mm -hmm. answer, just because like, if it's just for fun or whatever, but like, like I said, like, I'm super in love with you. I'm going to marry you. But if mm -hmm. my social media, who's that's just for fun is bothering you that much, then maybe I'll consider it, but you got to give me like valid reasons. <laughs> like you can't just say, oh, because like, you know what I mean? Like stupidest reason. No. Photos of yourself, like <laughs> yeah, Frankie, well, why would you ask somebody to delete their social media? I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. yeah great quest. i'm wondering that same question <laughs> yeah. no. reverend please preach to the choir now the spotlight's on you no no for sure, for sure i gotcha look it's because i've heard you know I, I do my research it's mostly through social media but i do my research right and like okay, if you if for example you're in a relationship with with a girl right and you know everything's good you're in love and whatnot but i've heard some things where guys it could be insecurity too, but where your girl might be posting some things. Imagine if Watch out, to Twitter is watching. Hey, hey, I don't, I don't mind. But she's posting a lot of things where, you know, it's like, you know, she's in a bikini, she's looking good and everything. And imagine if it isn't the case where she's not making the thing. If she's making money out of it, that's different. But there's people where we know they have social media platforms, they show a lot, but they're not making money out of it. So, for me, I feel if a guy asks, hey, can we kind of be a bit more private about what we show and whatnot? I don't necessarily think that's necessarily controlling, except if it's for your business. That's just me. Because some people, mm. if, if they're with you, like, yeah, you can still use social media, but sometimes you might have to kind of, because we're together, like slow down a bit. You don't necessarily need to show everything at all mm. times. So that's my yeah, for sure the fellas, i think that's I'm, different than asking someone to delete their account <laughs> so, so, so to the fellas jumping off of that okay would you be able to date an ig model uh -huh. that's a good question um alex I, i'd want to piggyback on what frankie said first is like why would you even be with a girl who's showing skin for fun on social media to begin with if that's going to bother you because mm -hmm. you select her to be your girlfriend knowing who she was now you want to change her it's mm -hmm. to me that kind of doesn't make sense like you knew she wasn't even making money and showing skin for fun and for the attention you should not have made that girl your girlfriend that's my point with that unless the whole you're ready to deal with it 
Exactly, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Because, but the whole thing with the IG model, I don't think I, I would, honestly, because the nature of that job, it's like, it's, it's almost like asking um, somebody, would you date somebody who's in the adult industry? It's not the same thing. I'm not comparing an IG model with a um, spicy star just to keep you monetized. But <laughs> at the end of the day, it's like you're my, I'm very um, like in my traditional values that mm-hmm. I don't think my uh, wife, mm-hmm. and if, if I'm not going to be comfortable for my daughter to mimic that example, I don't think my wife should do it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So if she's showing a lot of skins, I, I, I can't. I just like, I'm uh, more reserved that way. Hmm. Okay. What about yeah. you, Lilo? I want to answer last. Because I said too much. I mean, it really depends. I mean, IG model depends on how you're modeling, right? Because I mean, it's like, if you're one step Let's away- say Fashion Nova. I think he's saying Fashion Nova. Okay. I mean, okay. So she got 100K yeah. to one point, like 100K to like one plus mil followers. So I'm just so I'm looking at IG. Okay. Establish. Okay, let's see. Cause Fashion Nova, I mean, it's sexy, but it's like I still, I still feel like there's certain videos that have class to it. So I mean, it really depends on what she's putting out there. Like, obviously, you know, there'd have to be a conversation which would kind of clear things up to a level of understanding. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, I feel like it wouldn't really, it wouldn't really be that big a deal breaker for me if I were to date an IG model. But I mean, as long as there's that understanding, as long as there's that um, clarity of like. Is it your business? Like, like it, you like to have fun. You like to show your, show yourself and like show your physique and all that stuff. That's cool. You know, I don't I don't mind that. You know, like. Um, but there there has to be a level of uh, I, I like balance, right? I mean, is your is your is your profile all about physicality? If so, then like, well, what kind of audience are you after? Because that would be like the the determining factor, right? Like, if you just like attention, then it's like. You know, I mean, what about yeah, 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 yeah. you? You know, yeah, yeah, no, I feel, I feel that. Okay, yeah, yeah. For but me. then, it's like, if you have some intellect to it, you know, you have like something that you're trying to achieve. You know, you're you're putting out some inspirational quotes, or you're 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 putting your business there while you have these pictures. Then, like to that degree, I'm just like, okay, you know, my girl still has a dream. She has class, and like, sure, she has a body too. Like, you know, she has the right to express herself. <laughs> you know, but as long as it's not like borderline, you know you're one step away from being like a, a porn star, <laughs> you know, stuff like that, or a spicy model as a, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, answering to uh, I share question, I would casually date. Yes. Would it be long-term? Like I would give you the ring, be in a relationship, have kids or family. No, I just, <laughs> that's just not, it, it wouldn't happen just because of my values and how I grew up. There's just certain things that, like, I don't know, for me, I really, I'm really into women that, like, like, obviously, you can be a model and be extra, like, intelligent and whatnot. That's true. But I, I prefer, that's just my preference, I prefer women that are more on the intellectual side of things, where, yes, you can be pretty and everything, but your intellectual is kind of, like, people don't just know you about because you're a model. It's like, you know, they know, oh, yo, your girlfriend is someone we can have conversation with. It's not just a girl I know on IG. So that's yeah, just it's not what I want. Sense. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's like naturally, it's not about, I think it's not necessarily being insecure, it's just more that naturally you want your girlfriend like that other people think like in a good image. You don't want your girlfriend to be looked at others like, oh, she's like this or oh, she's like that. Like I always want my partner to have a good image around most people at least. I'm not saying everybody, but most people. Because I mean, there's, there's a lot of times where you know, the scenario will call for like a nice photo and stuff like that. You're going to the beach, you know, or you're, you, you, you bought an outfit that you really admire and you want to like, you know, show it to the world. So like to those degrees, I'm just like, yo, do, do you, you know, more power to you. You know, like I like what I see too. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, as long as there's an understanding that you're, you know, you're with me or anything like that, you're not fishing for anybody else's attention or like validation. You're just posting it because that's, that, that's a post that you genuinely like, then I'm all for it. But like, yeah, if it's the latter, then sorry. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, like, like but I'm really saying like in general, it, if if that ever happened that I'm serious with, with a girl that's like, we call it IG model, she has to be in the like two to 3% where it's like, she's like almost like the perfect one, then maybe. But that's like a, that would be really rare. Like it's, 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 oh. yeah, to, <laughs> it's like your intellectual is like this and obviously you're pretty, but like, you're still very intellectual. That I well, see how most of you guys, well, Frankie and Khalilo, you said 
it depends it depends it depends i don't want to be in that situation where i'm asking oh it depends or like having like a hundred conditions and rules i want my woman to be able to go like crazy in her career that's going to benefit her the best way like um if this contractor asks her listen i think that photo shoot would really benefit you she should be like able to take it i don't want to be that person that's holding her back that's mm -hmm. why i don't deal with it at all because i know certain like she's not going to be able to reach certain levels because of me mm -hmm. i don't want that that's why I'm, I would rather just not deal with it in general. Okay. Great point. Great point. Yeah. But what about you, um, ICR? Did you answer the question? Yeah, your own question. <laughs> uh, no, I, my own question. I'll let y'all uh, talk it out. <laughs> we don't do that. We don't do that. You know, but, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I guess to me, I, if, well, if I am, if I'm going for an IG model, then I kind of know what's, what's entailed in that, to be honest. You know, like if I'm dating you and I see you on social media popping, then I know what I'm getting myself into, right? So I wouldn't really have a problem dating an IG model. So I'm like, well, you're probably doing a photo shoot by the water for this product or for this new fashion line or for this or for that. Like I know you're going to be selling something and it might involve you being in like a bikini or something or a specific dress and stuff. So if I'm dating you, then I know what I'm walking into. I know what I'm walking into, you know, like Vic said. Conditions. You don't want to. You don't want to put yourself in that position because you you don't want to deal with that at all. But if you're walking into it, then it shouldn't really be like a uh, exactly. Maybe, it's going to gonna, go home. Yeah, bro. Like it's going to be like uh, maybe this or uh, maybe that. She can probably do it for this company, but not that company. It's like nah, bro. Like it, it, if I'm going into, it, I know what I'm coming out with. <clears throat> what about the ladies though? How are you ladies feeling about this? You know, dating an IG model and all that stuff. Like, like, yeah, 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 true. Like a celebrity man or athlete or whatever. That's like, right. Yeah, yeah. Be able to do that? Nah, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. That's a no for me. <laughs> I guess it goes back to what you were saying about like the um, like a low uh, low key kind of. Yeah. yeah. Very low key. Like, <laughs> Well, what's the healthy balance? Because you girls obviously don't want to date a bum that nobody wants, but you don't want to date like this high value, all super, all star rapper. So what's the healthy balance between I like this man, I'm proud of him, I want to show him off, and okay, no, he's too good looking. Mm. What are the standards <laughs> for Nelly? You want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I think it never really mattered of how many people wanted you as, as long as the I want you. You know what I mean? Like, if, like, uh, let's say, okay, let's say I actually, I, no, actually, I can't even say that because I can, I just can't don't see myself with an IG model. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, it's just not me. Um, no, I don't think I, I, no, I just oh. can't go for an IG model. But you don't want to be with an ugly guy as well, right? I'm well, assuming. He doesn't really have to be, because, like, you don't have to be ugly, like, no, wait, wait, you don't have to be a model to be good looking. You know what I mean? Facts, facts. Mm, that's true. Like, what, by what the way, you dress, like? you, can, you can already attract me, or by the way you speak, you can already attract me, you know what I mean? Like, the way your hair looks, like, maybe that's my style, but like, oh, I like that hair, like, let me see what's up, you know, like, it can be anything, it doesn't have to be, like, your followers, um, all the attention you get on social media and all that, like, I'm, I don't, it's just not me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you would you, and Oh, yeah, Nelly? Yeah, I don't, honestly, I don't know. I think I'd have to probably agree with Carla. And it's not to say that like I'd have an issue with it. I can't honestly think of like an example of like an, a male IG model. <laughs> and I okay. think it's 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 a very different perspective for like male IG models versus female or IG models because of, like, ooh, what are you gonna do? You post a photo shirtless? Wow. <laughs> like, you know, like the bright. double standard, the double <laughs> standard is so there of like women posting, you know, a photo in a bra or a bikini, and all of a sudden it's like super provocative. But if a man his thirst trap would be he's shirtless. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be like, oh, you have to delete that photo. Like, <laughs> I think that's a little biased in that sense, right? If you're thinking, if Very you flip true. the script and yes. you're thinking, you know, oh. or like, you know, if, if, if like you're, you like, if you like men, if you're gay, like if, and you're looking at a male IG model, like, would you have that same perspective? Mm. 
as you would if you were looking at a female IG model. Like, I think it's, it's true. yeah, it's very interesting to consider. Uh, I feel like male IG model <laughs> are not even that efficient when it comes to thirst trap because men are the visual creatures. And if men want to like thirst trap women, they need to show off more of their lifestyle rather than exactly. their looks and tricky oh, yeah. pictures. That's right, that's right. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. But to, but, even then, yeah. Oh. yeah, to that point, yeah. I probably still like, if you're talking about someone that's, you know, flexing their like fancy car or like their Rolex or whatever, like I'm I'm not interested. My friends, I see like, like maybe they're traveling give the me more. They're taking a lot of pictures of them traveling the world, you know, yeah, like that yeah. type of war, you know, or being on a boat. <laughs> Right. Instead, of diving. instead of posing with, surprise, pose with a, like a sea turtle or something across the <laughs> so so to the to, to, to the women to the panel so if michael b jordan pulls up and like yo like i want to take you out i want you to be my girlfriend you're gonna say no you're gonna be like nah you're too you're too a-list for me i gotta like step back like is, is that what i'm like i go for the adventure <laughs> But uh, knowing nothing would come from it. <laughs> but if you no, but if he's like, I want you to be my girlfriend, like I want, like I want to build life. Yes, right? what? It might could be Jordan saying that you're. No. That's a different perspective. I'm not perspective. I'm just saying. No, I'm joking. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Uh, like, okay. <laughs> no, I. It's still. It would still be the same. I don't know. Oh yeah, you go, you go, you go pass him. Wait, hold up. You're not gonna date Michael, Michael B. Jordan. You're gonna reject Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, that's Kai. And another like I would marry his <laughs> the chance. Okay, I would marry that man in a heartbeat. But in this <laughs> place, <can't>, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I I think that I, I believe the girls, but I think that for certain men, the roles are gonna change. Mm. Well, wait. wait, what do you mean by the role can change? Like she says, she has like her standards. Like I'm not gonna date the IG model, but Michael right. B. Jordan is a different story. Mm. So then her, the roles that she has for most men are going to change for like this little percentage of guys, you know, maybe uh -huh. Michael B might be part of that percentage of guys where the roles don't even apply. Yeah. And same, same goes for us guys. I think that maybe I'm going to meet this one girl at a library and she, like, like uh, we were saying earlier, we build a connection without Instagram at all. And then turns out she's an IG model and I find out, I find that out three ways in, then my initial role not dating IG, IG models can change. Yeah, like my philosophy is like there's always exceptions in life. Like you're always gonna find that little like even I had a theory I wanted to bring up. So Khalilo, I'm gonna bring the whole Frankie's theory. Frankie's theory, let's go. Okay. What's well, the I wish want, for it? Actually, wait, before I say the theory, I wanna hear on the girls like because I hear a lot of like you know, when it comes to dating, like on the girls' side, when they say they have bad experiences, it's often they're gonna say the same thing. Oh, this guy is a F boy. Oh, this guy is a bad boy treat me bad. So I wanted to hear first Nayeli and Carla on why do, I'm not going to say all the girls, but most often the story that we hear, why do they always go for the same type of guys would be my question. Because if you think about it, if you know, like when you mentioned the example of, you know, you walk on, you know, if we go by world market, right? You walk in the bio world market and you see some of the guys like, ah, the way he dressed, he's, he looks like an F boy. But then still some of the girls are going to go for that guy. So why, why does that happen? If I ask Nayeli and Carla, like why does I think that's a, attracts women? That'll be my question. <laughs> I think that's a very deeper conversation we have to have about ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. Personally, I have very bad rap sheet when it comes to past relationships, especially when I was younger. I um, and a person that probably stems from like personal problems more so than the person themselves. And unfortunately, that's the reality of a lot of girls. You know, you're looking at low self-esteem, any list of reasons that it could come from. And you're, mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes the fuck boy presents himself very well. And, you know, he gives you the validation that you're looking for and he gives you the attention that you're looking for. And oftentimes you're in too deep before you start realizing that there's all these red flags. And... Mm -hmm. I think oftentimes women don't even realize that they're a fuckboy until they're actually, you know, getting to know them more. And at that point, it's one of those situations where like, all right, but I've been pursuing him for so long. Like, how do I get out of it? And how, how do I get out mm -hmm. of it in a way that might not be like dangerous to myself, depending on who this person is. So I think there's a lot of like societal issues that you have to consider when you think about mm -hmm. why women go for that bad boy. Anyways, that's my two cents. <laughs> 
and those are the real fuckboys too, eh? Because the guys who are like just peacocking, they're obvious. You can smell them from like afar. But the one that I was describing, exactly, they they come and you don't even know, you know, knock yeah. you out from the blind side. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and I want to I want to hear a color thoughts on that too. I completely agree. Um, I think let's say like I'm walking in the bar and I see this guy I'm like, oh, this guy's just like a fuckboy. Okay. Um, I'm probably t- talking based on past experiences. Mm-hmm. I'm bringing up my past towards my present. You know, be like, oh, my ex used to dress like that or oh, my ex used to tell me the exact same thing. Now you're a fuckboy. You know what I mean? Now you're going to do me dirty like my ex. You know what I mean? So I think it's something It's something that has to do with inner work. Like you got to heal. And then once you're healed from all this trauma or whatever, that bond you created with your past, let it go. And then maybe you look at that guy in a, in a different way. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to look at you like, oh, you dress, oh, whatever, you dress cool. Like, oh, I want to get to know you. Let's see what he's all about. You know what I mean? Because like, let's say like what you, your ex was, was a blonde. You're going to go see it. You're going to see a girl who's a blonde. You're like, oh no, she's just like my ex. But no, she's just another girl with blonde hair. You know, <laughs> personality. So let me get to know your personality. You know what I mean? Hmm. Okay. Oh, I like the answer. I, th- I, I think men and women are very poor at mate selection. Um, their judgment is just flawed. And I think that's why people end up being with what they're dreading so much. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that um, based off we we're talking about with dating apps, the initial interactions, people are way too shallow, way too quick. And so what's important for a long-term relationship, like their val- values, family values, etc., are being dismissed. Or shallow things like, oh, are they like, do they have a lot of friends? Uh, how's their social media? Um, you know, how many teeth they have? <laughs> so <laughs> at, the, at the end of the day, like people are looking at the shallow things and especially you're not even dating one person. You're dating them and you're dating all their friends who they are asking like approval for. Like, what do you think of this guy? I'm like, he looks weird. So the friends may be like, I think part of the reason why people are very bad at like selecting people. That's true. That's, yeah. a, that's a good point yeah. but yeah but going back to my theory i think there's something about this too i don't know if it's correct but just you know i like i like psychology so i like to ask questions and bring up theory but i think too if you think about it right like in your day-to-day life right so like most guys or most people in general if it's women or men that you meet are going to be very nice to you right so it's always going to be that same thing every day like hey how's it going hey 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 once a guy comes and he's very different than everybody else He's not really nice to you from the get-go, but he's kind of just like kind of arrogant, maybe very confident and doesn't really treat you like nice, like that 95% of everybody else in society. Then in a weird way, I think that girls, maybe when they're they're much younger, they're in a weird way attracted to that because it's very different. They don't expect it. They're like, oh, like, because, you know, when you talk to nice people, you don't think, oh, this person is trying to get something out of me. But then once someone comes, and like they're very direct, they're maybe not as nice. In a weird way, you feel like, oh, okay, you started to like like that guy naturally. I don't know. That's my theory. I don't know if it's right, but that's what I think. Yeah. I think it's definitely like part of like the mystery, right? And I think as women as well, we have a very maternal instinct. And I know that this has been something that I've had in past relationships that I want to be the fixer, right? And it's a really awful habit, but there's just like something to be said about a guy that is an absolute mess. And you're like, I can be the woman that, you know, fixes him and makes him better. The Captain Saver Hall. <laughs> Yo, y'all are- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so I think I feel- that's definitely plays some part in that as well. Yeah. For I did- sure. And like, yeah. How did that work out, ladies of the panel? How did that work out when you found a guy that you're like, I can fix him. I can make him better. How did that really, how did that work out for y'all? Oh. I, I'm really curious. <laughs> Carla, any experience? Here's the wasted. And I think the best part is when you realize that that, that toxic person will just never change as much as you try to change them. Mm. So this is when you just got to take the, the step and like do something good for you and leave. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Once you leave, oh, you feel so free, guys. Yo, you feel like a freaking brand new bird flying. Like, like <laughs> brand new bird. Raise someone from the start. Like, I don't gotta raise a child. I don't gotta like, you know, like do all that like toxic behavior. Be gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very yeah. true. Very true. And I would add this. I think what girls appreciate about like the guy who's um straightforward 
is a lot of it is the honesty because this guy who's being uh, portrayed as an asshole, most of the time he's just honest. And that 95% of guys who are just nice and trying to, you know, get their way in through friendship, sometimes girls can see it through. Like, I know you want to sleep with me. My dog know you want to see, sleep with me. So <laughs> it's just like, it's refreshing to have that guy who's not like being ashamed of his sexuality. And he's just like, you know, there and assuming who he is and what he wants. And I think that's what girls find attractive uh, within those guys. Turns out that these guys tend to have a lot of options. So it's hard to find one that's loyal. Yo, that's a big point. Honesty, because it's like, I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I just, I'm not saying I just realized now, but like people to be like very honest is really hard. You think that it's easy for people to be honest, but it's really hard. So the people that are like brutally honest, oftentimes it's uh, like, you know, like, you know, when we when I talked about the whole study of like, what do girls or guys look in terms of tendency? Oh, funny, this and that. Honesty doesn't come up oftentimes in those standards but if i think about it now it should actually be the number one because if you think about it once someone is very honest already that's like uh i don't think nobody's gonna say oh i don't like an honest person everybody's gonna agree that they want someone to be honest so that that already should be a number one standard for everyone but it's never really mentioned oftentimes i feel it's always how do you know how do you know though someone's honest ah yeah, yeah, I you want to go deep, yeah. You know? <laughs> I don't know about being honest. Like, I think you have to be smooth about it too. Because let's say you're meeting a girl on Tinder, and the goal is meet up and have bedroom fun. Mm-hmm. Even though that's the goal, the girl doesn't want you to act that way, you know. So in a way, she wants you to be socially calibrated, and she wants you to be smarter than just being like, okay, this, this. It happens sometimes that that's that's the the game, but yeah. oftentimes you still gotta be. You're, you're honest, but play around the truth. Don't be, like, brutally honest. Okay, okay. No, it's a good Would problem. you say that there's more, like, space for women to be honest and straight up like that than men? 100%. Oh, well, yeah, the, the ball is in y'all courts. You're the wrong word, and the man is, is like, cancel, you know? Yeah. Uh, with us, it's like, I can't just walk up to you, and I see you in a club, and, like, Yo, you look good. Want to fuck? Then you just kind of like, oh, he's cute. But I want, the moment I said it, you're like, yeah, you know what? No, we're not gonna do that. You know, I probably have to be like, show off a little bit of like, you know, my vibe, my way you were saying it, being like, you know, it's like a non-verbal. You know, what I'm saying you know, I'm trying to, but I'm not gonna say it. You gotta yeah. play the Game of Thrones. Yeah, but if a girl would have said that. Yeah, and I don't point, see like well, go, go ahead sorry yeah because 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 when when if women are a little bit more brutally honest it's like, okay well she chose me so either it's a yes or a no I'm, I'm gonna most like say yes but it's like ah, okay so you chose me, so I know, <laughs> all right okay we can we can do this you know there's no like chase it's like you've you've picked me okay you know like how many pages can you see of girls just sharing their screenshots of guys who said dumb shit. I've never seen a picture of guys like sharing screenshots of girls who are like not calibrated. That's so true. That's right. Y'all be exposing. Because there's, because Sigma Leo, there's consequences now. It's like, if you say certain things as a guy, it's not going to look good. They're probably going to say, oh, you're, um, what's the word? Uh, misogynist or maybe this type of person, this type of person. Even if you're even not even trying to say, but like words are powerful. So if you say something that most are like, yo, that's like a bad word, then people are going to label you right away. So I think there's just more consequences for guys versus women. That's, yeah, I would say, yeah. Do you agree with that, Nayeli, or no? In terms of the men and women? Like in terms of honesty? Yeah, honesty, yeah, for your question that you asked. Yeah, I'd say that there's there's definitely some truth to that. Um, yeah, like kind of Sigma Leo mentioned, you know, like if a woman is going out of her way to be honest with you and like straight up, then obviously the interest is there. Whereas mm-hmm. I think absolutely, like sometimes there definitely is situations where men, you know, have to play the game. If you ideally, if you find someone and you're both kind of on the same wavelength and you're both just straight up and you have an understanding of what's going on, like, you know, that's mint, but that's very rare. <laughs> No, okay. okay, that's good. Uh, Kriegel, did you have a, another question? 
question. Let's see. Bye bye. I feel like we covered a lot. We covered a lot yeah, uh, <laughs> of this topic. I mean, if anything, let's see. Or you know what? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, go, go. Uh, I'm gonna ask around the question of like casual mm -hmm. versus um, a relationship. Like serious relationship. Yeah, I, I feel like I don't know. Like, where's everybody's vibe right now? Like, do Ooh. you find that you're on uh, a casual tip? Where it's like you still want to be like testing waters and meeting people and like having these different experiences to find out what you really want out of life, or are you on the are you on the stage where it's like what you you know if, if you have something then like is that what you want, and, or are you looking for the next partner to be somebody that like you can stick long term with? So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask all you guys about that. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. I want I want to enter last, so someone else go. <laughs> I was actually gonna pick on you first, but I can't. I <laughs> <laughs> I have an answer, but I want to hear the guest first. So, who wants to? Sigma Leo, do you have an answer on that? I finally have an answer. So, hey, I'd say um, I'm looking for casual. This is what's on my Bumble profile. Nothing too serious. Okay. But at the end of the day, everybody's looking for that special someone. That's right. I just don't like to go in with expectations. So I'm saying casual, as in, if I'm dating you, don't have expectations. But I'm not gonna shy away from a true connection ever. It doesn't matter what stage of my life I am. If there's a genuine, true connection, I'm going to take it. But the vibe right now is just to see girls like because of my focus is on my grind. And if I can find a girl who can handle that, sure. But not a lot of girls I've noticed can handle a man who's like on his grind like that. Mm. Uh, I had a, yeah, facts. I agree with that too. I mean, like I might as well go say the next. <laughs> mm. it's, it's exactly like that. Like, I mean, I'm looking for like cool vibes right now, you know, just like those nice experiences where it's like, even if I were to meet somebody, okay, you like hiking, let's go hiking. Mm. You know, let's see what that's all about. You're right. And then you have like genuine experiences. But like if there's a a vivid and like clear connection that there's something there, then for sure I'm not gonna shy away because like, oh, you know, I wanna see what the next what the next person has in store. You know what I mean? Like if there's something there, then like I'm gonna stick with it if the vibes are cool. But um, yeah, the whole idea of like the grind and everything like that, at least that's, that's kind of the experience I got as well. Like, um, I don't know, it's like the lack of time for the other person and them not understanding like, what you want out of life to a degree, you know, I mean, that's, that's kind of like the disconnect that I got in like, uh, you know, previous relationships and stuff like this. So yeah, but I don't know, that's just my vibe right now. I'm looking for, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, handle my projects and uh you know get my grind in order uh right but like if i if i have some nice relationships or like casual cool you know vibes along the way then that's perfect that's perfect good man okay what about you uh, carla you yeah I, I could i could like completely agree with both of you like i don't i don't know another way to put it like you know like all you know looking like just meeting people and if, if we click like we click, you know, what I mean? like why would I want to keep meeting up with other people if you and I are clicking? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so if I everything I needed you, then what's the point? <laughs> yeah, facts, facts. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, then, I'm about to say I started in Nelly, but they're already in relationships. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna put us in hot waters if we're looking, looking for the next best <laughs> thing. Yeah, we're looking for problems. <laughs> oh, yeah, these, are, like, these are incriminating questions here. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> trying to what you're trying to say here, huh? So I said, I said. This this is, but, um, <laughs> but look, if I have to be like honest, I'm gonna yeah. say with check. Like I'm in a relationship right now, so I am pretty much focused on building what I have with my girl, which is cool because it's like I, I've I've realized I'm a different. There's a different side to being a relationship man versus to being a casual yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? You know, casual man is like you know. Go with the boys, I'm looking out for myself. It's my time, my time only. I can't really, you know, disperse that willy nilly. I got, I'm gonna do what I gotta do. You know what I'm saying? Like we on my time. Preach. Relationship, <laughs> relationship is more like ah, you know, it's making me think not for myself, but for the other person also. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's cool that I got somebody to always come home with, and like that that it's kind of helping me build and understand my dreams, understand kind of like. I got my space sometimes, but I also got somebody to come home and cuddle with and these type of things. So to me right now, like I'm on relationship mode all day, every day. Yes. But you know, talk about ICR before a relationship. Oh, yo, I mean <laughs> <laughs> they got some stories. Huh? <laughs> hey, yo, le, 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 I'm out here, you know, on the GP mom. On the GP mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. 100%. That's good stuff. 
Well, Nayeli, I already know your answer, but if you want to say... Well, I w if I want to add something, I'd say that there's definitely, like, different levels to a relationship. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Alex is speaking from... He's been in a relationship for a year. You know, that's that's honeymoon stuff still. You know, you're, oh. like... You're still figuring each other oh. out. What you're trying goal? to build the thing. <laughs> Three years in, let me tell you. <laughs> that's a long time. That's, that's a long time. I, yeah, hey. I did you that. Oh, so I think you forget. COVID times, right? I'm still 22, <laughs> to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. I'm still 22. So one year in COVID time is like four or five years. You know, like I'm in fair, the, fair. I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. But just to say, to kind of go back off the point that there are like, you know, different levels to relationship. My boyfriend and I have been in a relationship for three years. But at the same time, like, I can't say really that it's like, completely an adult relationship like we both still lived with our parents like since we were dating um, we've never really been in an environment where we've had our own space and have been able to like kind of explore that and explore like what a next step or next level would look like yep. now that I have my own place that's kind of been something that we're able to look at so I think that's kind of where I am at in that stage of exploring you know what like an actual future would look like and it's very interesting and you know you're i'm finding out a lot of like quirks that maybe i hadn't noticed before which is fun because it makes it it makes it different than what it's been for the past three years so i think there's a there's a lot to look forward to once you actually get in a relationship and you find someone with whom you're compatible yeah. it's work yeah i can tell y'all right it's work you know what i'm saying <laughs> work. like it's not but it's not like work in a bad way it's just kind of like like i said it it's the type of work that you know, like, yo, like, this person's worth it. So let me, like, let me do it. Because I'm somebody who's, like, messy. I'm going to be, I'm messy. As <laughs> so when my girl's not having a bad day because, I'm, you know, I've left the dishes and I then emptied the dishwasher or whatever. <laughs> now I'm just kind of like, usually I wouldn't want to do it. But I know I have to do it because it's going to, it's going to ease her day. It's going to help her out. And, you know, so I'm like, oh, I'm thinking more like, ah, yo, like. You know, let me not be so messy. You feel what I'm saying? Let me pick up my clothes and what. Let me, you know what I'm saying, do the, the small little things and work on it. That's what I'm saying. Like a relationship, when you find the right person, it kind of makes you open your eyes and be like, yo, like this is what it is. You know, you work on things. There's compromises on things. You, 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 it, it's a, it's a partnership. You know, we both have the championship, you know? So, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Like y'all find people that like, you're willing to like take that next step with and build uh, towards something. <laughs> Cause like I like couples that have that have goals, you know. What I mean, like couples that like um, have goals that like have common interests. You know, you don't have to have the same goal, but as long as you support each other in the goals and you like willing to pump up the other person, you know, help out whenever they need it. You know, just like to see to see you both win. I, I like that kind of stuff. You know, so it's like to find somebody that like you know you can do that with. I feel like that's special, and everybody should hold on to that. True. Well, actually, I didn't answer yet the, the question. So since that's I'm right. I was about to pick on you, man. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 my answer is simple. I'm just trying to have fun this summer. So by saying that, it's like a relationship, if, if, if I meet a girl and it clicks and it happens, it happens. I can't control it. But because like I'm very busy, I have the podcast, I have work, I have other things, like my time is priceless. So when I have that little off time, I'm trying to have fun. And too, because we've been in COVID for so long, it's like, yo, honestly, like, look, I'm not a sugar daddy and I don't have that money. Uh, I want to, hold up, hold up, hold up. I thought I you wanted, were. No, no, I'm not. What happened to the pool pit? You got reverend money, man. What's, what's going on? <laughs> but you know, as I said before, I'm very generous with my money, so I don't. I, I want to spend a bit of money during the summer. That's pretty much what I'm saying. Okay. So by saying I that, I have a question. For go the ahead. Panel. Yeah. Um. <laughs> what are what is for for my well for me and Nelly we're in relationships, so I, I still might just ask yep. regardless, but uh since most of y'all are single, what are your expectations? I know it's casual, but like dating long-term, what are your expectations now? Are you mm. are you still dating to try to find, like what are your expectations going dating on the long-term? So I want to know, actually, and curious going around the panel. Good Ooh. question. Let's yeah. See. Mm -hmm. If I could break the ice, I would honestly say, if I, what I want in a partner is just somebody that has like an open mind, somebody that like is, is willing to have adventures, somebody that like matches my kind of humor and, and like, my kind of banter, you know what I mean? Like to have that, and then I feel like whatever, whatever happens after, you know what I mean? As long as there's that connection, then like it can work, you know, because like we have that like chemistry, that's what it is, chemistry. If that chemistry is dope, 
then it's like, what, oh, what do you want to do out of life? Cool, I support that. What do I want to do out of life? This is this, this, this. And they'll quit. She'll be like, cool, I support that. But like, it'll, it'll all be through that chemistry. So I mean, um, as long as there's that adventurous kind of, you know, like childlike wonder in, in a relationship, then I'm all for it. That's, that's what I'm after. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. What about you, uh, Simulio? Listen, you? inshallah, the next time that I'm telling this girl is my girlfriend, we're crossing the finish line. You know, I'm, I'm just tired of breakups. So I'm going to be really picky and say, it's not going to be about the butterflies. It's really going to be about like the values right from the get go. Like that she loved children. I need her to be motherly. I need her to be the yin to my yang because I know we, we have to complete each other in a way. Like you have to fill in my blind spot. I have to fill in yours. Uh, somebody that's, you know, can be, that I'm comfortable with, can be supportive. Mm -hmm. And ideally somebody who can be there before I may, I make it because I know I'm going to make it. But if you're asking, it's going to be hard to like judge if you're really there for me or not. Mm -hmm. So ideally somebody who can witness the grind. That's so much better. Like, and you have her like pumping you up. It's like, you know, you got to this level, but like, I remember you were here, you know, you did this, you struggled so hard to get to where you mm. were. But like, if you're dating after you find success, then it's like, it's not that, it's not that genuine when they're trying to like- It's like a Michelle Obama, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Like she was there from the start. I feel you, I feel you. Oh, yeah, man, if you can't, you can't head of me on my 2010 Gucci man, you don't deserve me on my 2018 Gucci man. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> That's funny. And what about you, Carla? Yeah, same here. I think I think like for us all, I think we've all just um, revolved around career wise, you know, like um, for me, I think you, you like obviously like I'm not going to like expect anything from people. Right. But mm -hmm. with your partner, you'd want them to be so like to, to be supportive and like because like that's the person you want to come home, home to and be like complain about like, oh, like, you know, like today, like this happened to me at like, you know, and my job or something and you want you want that person to be there for you you know what i mean but i'm not the person that will like be there for you as well like 110 percent. you know like compromise like we we gotta be there for each other everything in the relationship for me has to be 50 50 if i see myself doing more i'm yeah. out you know what i mean okay. that's that's a lot of energy taken away from me that's a lot of i don't know like trust issues can be built up um disloyalty can start happening like not from my part, but like, let's say like, if you're not being present in my life, then what's the issue? You know, what's going on? What are you doing? You know what I mean? Like who's taking that time? Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So like, I think 50-50 is really important for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I, feel that. I feel that. Cause it's like, yeah, if you're, not if you're not receiving the same kind of energy that you're putting out, then like, it's not, there's no balance in the relationship. So yeah. eventually where's it gonna go? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I support you all, oh, everything that you're doing, you know, I ask, how you're doing throughout your day, all that stuff, you know, make sure that your, your head is in a good place. But if I don't feel the same kind of energy, then it's like, are you really the right person that I should be with? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I, feel that. I feel that, I feel that, yeah. Okay, well, for me, let's see. Honestly, mm -hmm. I, I think I have two, two criteria. Well, it's not even expectation or standard, but it's just like two things. So one, it kind of, it's kind of silly to say, but like, if I want to talk to you all the time, that's a good start. And second, if we can, if we have a direction, so like if we can build a plan to be like, because I want a family eventually. So if I, if I want to be in a relationship, but like a serious relationship, their girl has to be on the same uh, wavelength than me. Like she wants to have a family. She wants to have kids. Even if we can build like, you know, if she has her own business, I have my podcast and other uh, ventures. We can like build a little empire or something of that nature. Like that would be dope. Right. But, that <laughs> exactly. but ideally it would really just be, be in the same direction and then you know we just we just fuck with each other man we want to be together all the time that would be my two things really yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Boy, so, so yeah. sorry just to judge this is to hop in a little bit yeah. uh another yeah. thing too which i find very important is the sense of finding comfort in discomfortable mm -hmm. or uncomfortable situations because mm -hmm. it's like yeah there are some times in a relationship where it's like the person that you're with you know you're gonna have to be vulnerable yeah. you're gonna have to like share a part of yourself uh, that maybe you would normally not share with anybody else, right? So it's like, if you're able to do that with somebody and like have that level of comfort in times that are uncomfortable, like, yo, hold on to that. <laughs> Lock that in, because that's, uh, yeah, that's important. But go ahead. Uh, yeah, I see it. I think you yeah. want, want to say something? Yeah, just to like, I just, I like this conversation because like I've heard all of y'all's different like assessments, especially like Vic saying like, I'm not looking for, 
for sparks anymore. I'm looking for like the value. So to me, it's kind of like, it, since we're talking about dating, the one. Are y'all are y'all holding out for the one, or you're just gonna look for the girl that has like the most like similar like like you said, similar alignments as you? Okay, I'm gonna reveal and expose my mating strategy. Okay, <laughs> this is my mating strategy. I have three absolute turnoffs. Like if you have those three, it's done. But at the same time, if you have eighty percent of what I want, it's a go. It's it's green light. You know, so eighty percent. And within the 20% that you don't have, it cannot be those three immediate turnoffs. So that's my meeting strategy. If she has 80%, then we're good to go. And I feel like the one to me is the one that I, that's going to be there um, side by side when I'm about to die. I cannot tell that this person is the one until I'm on my deathbed and we've like went through the test of times. Yeah, once, you, once you're ready to close the chapter huh? <laughs> exactly because okay. before it's like a lot of people have been the one the one is the person you are with at the time right so it's hard to say like if, are they actually the one the one you can only tell when the book is over right i like that Ooh, that's deep that, that's the, yeah like that. justice. <laughs> well i remember i said when we did another episode prior we had a little discussion about the one for me it's still the same answer is the one I give a ring to. Like, I want to marry that girl. That's the one. Um, yeah, that will be really yeah. my answer. Because for yeah. me, I think at marriage, like, if I'm going to marry you, it's because, like, I want to be with you for the rest of your life. I can't, That's like, true. if we divorce, if something bad happens, at least I knew, okay, you were still the one for that moment. And it just ended up. I can't, like, I don't want to focus too much on the future. It's just more on, I give you the ring, you're the one. That's that's how it goes for me. It, it is rough, and like um, like Nayeli was saying, you know, like relationship, there's stages to relationships, right? So it's like once you move in with somebody, then you start seeing different things, and it's like are those things that you're seeing things that you're willing to put up with? You know, it's like some people they move in after marriage, and what happens then? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like if you don't know, if you don't have experience, a recipe for disaster, <laughs> right? Exactly, a recipe have- for disaster. Facts, facts. If you don't have that experience of like. Um, you know, being with the person and like living with the person, you know, like budgeting with the person, all that stuff, then it's like, like, that's why I appreciate people who take the time to uh, have that level of experience. Some people, they get dogs as when they live together. And it's like well, uh, dogs, cats, animals or whatever, but that's like supposed to be training to a degree where it's like, oh, okay, can you take care of the dog? <laughs> if so, then maybe you're ready to take care of a child at some point, yeah. right? So it's like, there's all these little things where I'm just like, yeah, relationships do, do go in stages. And some people, they jump the gun way too early. And maybe that's because of like traditional beliefs or anything like this, where it's like, oh, no, I can't live with you unless unless we get married. You know, some, some women are like that. Some men are like that. So it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, man, I don't know. It's just, um, it's interesting is all I'm saying. <laughs> well said. What about yeah. uh, Carla? What would be your answer to, uh, I see a question about the one. Mm-hmm. Uh... I think when I see a future with you, it's very hard for me to see a future with the person I'm dating. So if I if I'm seeing a future with you, then I'll just automatically know you're the one. Like that means like you've proven you've proven it to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, I haven't like it's it's my past relationships. I don't think I've seen a future with with that person. So that's honest. Yeah. Yeah. So I think i like yeah. So that's and that's really what I'm looking for in a person. Like if if I'm if I'm dating you and everything, and like I'm like. And then, like in my head, like, oh, like our babies would be cute. You know what I mean? But they're like, okay, you're the one because I'm thinking of marrying you and having, you know, having your children. So. Okay, okay, okay. You know, a nice house. Like. Okay. That's so my much, foundation. Uh, what does it take for you to see the future with the guy? Damn. Um, I think when when it comes to what you said, my values are being met. With, you know what I mean? Like our values mm. are yeah. Um. What else? I think for me, loyalty like matters to me a lot. Mm. So if if I see that you're a loyal person in, I guess in this generation, then that's like a big. <laughs> in this generation. No, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So loyalty so over love, or. Um, yes, because with loyalty, I think that's as comes love. Because if you're loyal to me, then that means you have some sort of love for me. You know I mean? Hey, there's no loyalty without love, is my take. Exactly. Uh, there's no love without loyalty, sorry. There's no love, yeah, there's no love without loyalty. So it's like, you might, it might be your definition of love, but I don't want it. 
exactly yeah because a relationship is a commitment so if you're really committed naturally you should be loyal it should yeah. be part of the commitment exactly. if you wonder about people who would put love over loyalty you know what i mean like what does that say about them <laughs> like like do they have an entirely different perspective or are they just like is it a wrong perspective like because i mean i do agree with the whole like loyalty over love because it's like if you love somebody naturally you're going to be loyal to them and it's you know you're never going to break that loyalty unless if there's like some kind of issue or whatever you know what i mean but like yeah this is interesting somebody that would but i Ahead, I'm sure the people in long-term relationship can attest to that. Love goes like roller coasters. It's not always, like you're not always going to feel in love with your person. You might be in love, but sometimes the feeling is not going to feel that way. And that's how you mm-hmm. can keep them for a long time, right? So knowing that when you don't feel in love, what are you going to do? You have to be loyal because if you're not loyal, every time that you feel that, that love is gone, um, you're just going to venture around and like bring some, energies in your relationship from outside whether it's yeah. stds or actually like energy you know i believe in that shit so because oh, no. yeah, yeah, um, because you always got love for the person but you know there's days where you might annoy them or they might annoy you but the loyalty is always like i'm never gonna like i'm always gonna have your best interest at heart regardless of how i'm feeling emotional mm-hmm. so exactly I'm saying, out of love i'm not even that you hate you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I've been, you know, I love you, but I just don't let you hate. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But out yeah. of loyalty, I'd be like, you know what? It don't, it don't matter who's coming. Like, you may be in the wrong, but you know what? I'm, I'm not going to say you're in the wrong from those people. I'm going to, like, defend you. I'm going to never, like, talk back behind you. I'm going to, like, always have your best interest. Mm-hmm. Like, like, trust me that, like, I'm going to be the soldier that's going to hold it down. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the difference between the rookies and the advanced people. The advanced people know, well, like you're saying, when I don't feel in love with you, I still have your back. Like, it's not the more, it's, not, it's not exciting right now in our relationship, but I'm not going to talk shit. I'm not going to look around for the next best thing. But the rookies, whenever that storm hits and they don't feel in love anymore, it's like, holy shit, have we grown apart? They start panicking. They start, like, looking around, like, oh, my God, this guy treat me so much better. The grass is greener. They start talking shit to their circle. And so I feel like this is a difference. When you're a rookie, um, as soon as you don't feel in love anymore, your relationship is going to shit. But you got to know, and I think Nayeli can attest to that, your relationship is only going to keep going when you know how to love when you're not in love. That's right. Oof, I like that. <laughs> I would say, I love you. I just don't like you right now. And yeah. <laughs> that's like one of those feelings mm. that like, I, I always have love for you. I always have loyalty for you, but depending on the situation, sometimes yeah. we're just not getting along. I'm not a fan of yours right now, but <laughs> the, re- the basis is still there. Yeah. Mm. I like that. I like that. Yo, that's a perfect definition. Yo, you guys killed it. <laughs> like, you know, like, um, we need to conclude, like, because, you know, in life, life is hard. So relationship shouldn't, if life is hard, a relationship should be hard too. Like not saying hard, like, all, is that gonna be always a struggle but there's gonna be some downfalls you just have to figure out how to always come back and stay together yeah it's like diamonds are made through pressure no yeah and that's why like, communication comes in you know what i'm saying like there's always going to be hard moments in a relationship between two people mm-hmm. if we went into it just like off pure emotion there was no like basis there was no common ground it was just kind of like i'm so in love with you i'm so in love with you too and then we die like romeo and juliet without actually being right like, yeah, we know who we are do we do, what do you like what do you not like and stuff like that because you know like mm-hmm. i've i'm i've been living with my girlfriend like on and off here and there but i've been mostly living here and then there's been situations where i'm like come on man why you like this and even sister's like Yo, why you like this <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then i'm always like you know what you're right sometimes you know like i'm let me like, understand but honestly you are let me back off a little bit i am doing too much you know what i'm saying I, i'm a, i make sometimes i am too annoying let me just like calm it down you know like it, it was just pure emotional i'm like well get out i'm like all right i'm out. i'm leaving let me just go somewhere else and then we wouldn't make it to one year you know mm-hmm. but yeah I definitely have Amen. to say about long-term relationships they're humbling and a lot of people aren't ready for that. And that's fine because, oh! you know. <laughs> Yo, when you, my, before I thought I had style. You know what I'm saying? In terms of oh. your trash. Your, 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 your dress gives you trash. You know what I'm saying? But then, you know, of course you take a hit. But then when you, it, 
when you realize, like, okay, maybe I'm, I have, I have high school clothes from like when I was in ninth grade and I'm like 23. I'm like, ah, you know what? Yeah, maybe, maybe I should <laughs> it up. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes, like you said, it's a humbling experience, bro. Not, I leveled up in my dress game because my brothers had to dress. So I'm like, ah, you know, okay. 23, I have 23 year old clothes. Now, you know? Yeah. So sometimes. Yeah, but all I, that to say, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot to be said about you know, being in your early 20s, mid 20s, and this is the only time you're gonna have to be selfish. So for the people, for you guys that are single, like be picky, honestly, like take the time, you're all working on yourselves, you're all like putting in the grind, like honestly, this is the time for it because no one wants to be dating someone at like, you know, 35 and they still don't have their shit together because they didn't take that time earlier on in their life. 100%. So don't ever yeah. feel bad for like not being in a relationship. <laughs> Yo, not sure, not that you do, but. <laughs> These are the golden years, man. 20 years old is the time where you will get lost. You want to go to a country for like a month and like emerge yourself. And yeah. maybe you want to invest in something and lose all your money, then make it all back again. Or maybe you want to like spend like hours learning a new language and this, that, and the third. Or maybe you want to just like, work out and like get yourself up and shit. So it's like, yo, the golden years of 20 years old, just do what you gotta do, man. Live your life, because then you'll just come out of it way better. Facts, mm. 100%. Um, I'm gonna give my closing thoughts because my phone is dying. Okay. But I feel like uh, women, their loyalty is tested when their man has nothing. And men, their loyalty is tested when they have everything. So as a man, my um, idea or advice would be for like whoever's watching is like, Make sure you work uh, to your best of your ability to be the best version of yourself sometimes before you even consider being in a relationship, like at least at a decent level. So you really know if that girl is really what you want or if you're just holding on to what you can get. Because Frankie was saying earlier, like, man, they don't necessarily have a lot of these options until they've worked on themselves, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that, that, that would be my closing thoughts. Okay. So like, yo, yo, this conversation has been amazing, but I think we have to conclude it one day. But before we do... We're gonna do with a little, a little, you know what? Music oh, yeah. for days segment. Days. Oh yeah, yeah. music for days. So on this one, a bit more relaxed, less about dating, more about songs. So every week we bring a new song of the week. Since we have a cool panel here for people, they'll also bring up their songs of the week for the fans. So who wants to start? Who has a song in mind they wanted to share uh, to the world? All songs, but I will choose only one. Okay. <laughs> The artist's name is Soli Had, and the Soli Had, the, and the name of the song is called Drugs. Ooh. Okay. Uh, I... <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it's because I, I found him on TikTok, everybody yeah. from my TikTokers out there. Um, he had played a snippet on that song. He had played the snippet of the song, and it's really, really cool. And I like the beat and, like, the emphasis of it, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, some, some about before the summer, since we're talking about dating. 100%. 100%. I, I don't even know that song. I'm going to listen to it for sure. That's good. I see it. And uh, what about Carla? <laughs> uh, mine would probably be, I think it's, I don't, you guys, are you guys okay with French song? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah let's go. Cool. Okay. I think it would be Moi Je Prouve by Taik. Oh, Taiki? Oh, that's a great one. Yeah. 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 That's my guy. Okay. Yeah. Damn. My song will be um, Clear Soul Forces. Okay. Um, by um, Get No Better. Ooh. Oh, yo. <laughs> I, don't know. I, lo I love that track. I love that track. Mm -hmm. It's just so creative. It's, it's dope. Yeah. Yeah. Good group. Oh. And what about you, uh, Nayeli, for your song of the week? I have a little like romantic vibe. So um, Lauren Hill's version of Can't Take My Eyes Off of You. Damn. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, great. I think that's actually Khalidu. I think it's two two weeks in a row we have the Lauren Hill song. Lauren Hill, yeah, that's oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. On the roll, on the coincidence, <laughs> but it just happened. Yeah, that's good. And Khalidu, I want to go last, like always. So, what's your oh, song okay. of the week? <laughs> All right, so here's a song that I really love. It's by it's by phony people. <laughs> okay. uh, don't get distracted by the names, but it's called Why. <laughs> <laughs> why? Oh, why I love the moon, and it has three eyes in it. So it's like this song. I mean. I just love the moon in general. You know what I mean? Like, it's always nice to look at. Always the vibes are just calm. It's very, like, you know, nice space to, like, think and everything like this. So it's like, yeah. I hear a song of people talking about why they love the moon. 
like especially in this in, in this kind of vibe like it just it, it gets me right here so i'm gonna go with that i'm gonna share that with you good folk <laughs> Those and, good oh, that's come, to the rev. come on come on i have to yeah, so you know r&b like always this song oh. i think i, I find it on, on uh, spotify just randomly it's very underrated it's not like a popular song like that but i really like it it's a uh, kojo stone and it's uh, ego trip it's like really like a dope r&b song like even the lyrics and everything like it hits different to me i don't know but every time i listen to it it's really good so yeah ego trip by kojo stone it's nice. my song Oh, just so yeah. that sounds familiar, but I definitely got to check that out. Yeah, I think he's an artist somewhere in the, like Brooklyn, some in Brooklyn or New York. I'm not too sure, like Jamaican descent, but yeah, it's dope. It's really dope. All right, can I know the song also. To be honest, I have that. <laughs> hey, go for it. All right, I'm sorry. Hey, sorry. Go ahead, bro. Yo, we have a playlist on our Spotify, so more songs that we can have on it, the better it is. So go ahead. This song called "Overrated" okay. by Blast. So Blast is spelled B L X S T, and the song's called "Overrated." So basically, it's kind of mostly about how he talks about, you know what I'm saying? I would rather I would rather have your loyalty than your love because then you're going to ride for me when things get hard. So oh, stick it to the topic. I like it. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> that's clever, that's clever. Tough. That's tough. So, you know. Yeah, before, yeah. before you top it off, you yeah. know, bring us home. That's what I say. You know, it's been a real pleasure having all you guys on here. You know, I mean, uh, and, you know, like like the rep says, man, anytime you're here, you can come back. You know, and always get, welcome. The topics that you guys have, you guys have, you know, it's always always for it. So we look forward to seeing you guys again. We got our two vets right here, Sigma Leo and ICR. Yeah. So, you know, uh, got to bring that source of passion and that car love, you know, pleasure. So <laughs> we look forward to having you guys again. And if you guys want to shout out your, um, you know, yeah, if you want to plug in everybody, your Instagram, yeah. YouTube, even if you have a TikTok, anything that you do, plug yeah. it in. So who wants to start? We can go with, uh, let's see, Nayeli, you go first. What you want to plug in for the face? <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, Instagram um, at Proud Mexicana. Okay. Follow me if you want. <laughs> That's what's up? That's what's up? <laughs> All right. Good shit. Good shit. And what about? I will go with IC Arts. You know what it is. It's your boy IC Arts on Instagram, on YouTube, aka Mr. Bafro. Um, I do a song coming out June 18th, so this Friday, called "We Don't Care." Future and Harry Blazing, I'm telling you right now, it is the summer song that you needed in your playlist. Ooh, I'm excited. Hey. I'm hyped for that. That's going to be dope. Your last time was a banger, so I can, I can only imagine what you're going to bring to the table on the next one. So. <laughs> I know. Shout out to Asya. He's been really consistent with the music. Like every month, dropping a new song. That's crazy. So let's see. You. No, you already know. <laughs> and uh, what about Carla? What do you want to plug in for your socials to our fans? I guess my TikTok and Instagram are both the same, which is Carla Almore. Ooh, okay, dope. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. Dope. And then Sigma Leo, what do you want to plug in for our fans? Um, so on YouTube, we just reached 200 subs. So keep it, keep the good thing going. Sigma yes. D Leo, we talk everything One Piece. So if you love One Piece, you love anime, help the channel grow. And on Instagram, it's Leo Big Thirteen. I post like dope polls so if you want to you know have your little philosophy dose every day follow me on there it's hype oh. <laughs> no, doubt, no doubt yeah so I this is good. Shirt, man. I'm, I'm gonna holla at you real quick <laughs> yo of course man the merch is gonna come soon <laughs> okay okay <laughs> Those stuff. so yeah again we want to thank everybody nayeli sigma leo icr carla for coming to the podcast and for our fans don't forget to subscribe like comment also give us five ratings on apple and spotify too that'll be much appreciated and we'll be back next week with the new chapter tom uh tom six yeah i believe yeah tom, tom six is that's seven. what you know we've had many tomes so far now. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm losing my thoughts but yeah we'll yeah. be back with a new chapter new episode and we'll be you know make sure to bring more guests so stay tuned we'll be back next week and uh yeah again thanks everybody for coming and have a good day Yes. Peace out. The weekend. Stay safe, happy, and happy. Peace. Peace.